This is Bruce Ruffer, and this is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for the MMA Halls! Welcome to the show, friends. Everyone hit the Fugin like button. I hope everyone is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tonight wonderful. as we are here. We are live. The MMA holes our Ariel took off tonight, but we're here hanging with the boys. Hanging with the boys. Good to see everyone in the chat room. Happy Memorial Day. I mean, it's always weird saying happy. You really shouldn't say happy Memorial Day, right? You shouldn't. Because we're remembering the people we've lost. So, shout out to the people out there who served this fantastic, wonderful, wonderful country. Um, may your souls be in a better place than this dreaded world we all live in now. Um, but yeah, Memorial Day, I hope everyone had a great day. Whether you had a barbecue or just, you know, laid low. Whatever you did, I hope you had a great day. Um, and shout out to the troops out there. I salute you. Thank you for your service. Um, tonight, we have a lot to talk about as the UFC is back in action. Uh, Saturday night, it's going to be absolutely glorious. I was looking up and down the card, and I was like, okay, where am I placing my bet this week? On mybookie.ag, promo code MMAHOLES for 100% match on your first deposit. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, as I was looking at the card, this... I don't recommend people bet on this card. I, I'm just trying, I'm looking around, and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Got beard in my, beard in my mouth. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really recommend it. I don't, re I, I will talk about it as I go through the car, but I was looking at the spreads and looking at these matchups, and it could go either way in a lot of situations. I, I think we might have to just shove popcorn in our face and enjoy uh, Saturday's events. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll discuss that more. But the thing that I threw on the thumbnail over here is Luke Rockhold and Habib Nurmagomedov. Owned is what happened inside the gym. Now, uh, Luke made a visit back to his old team, and uh, it was like a whole little reunion. You miss DC, though. Like, where, is, where was DC in the mix? And there was a video that was released of Luke and Habib rolling around on the ground. And um, they weren't really rolling. It was <laughs> Luke just being owned it is fascinating to watch and i understand you can't really take too much from just gym footage guys training horsing around blah 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 it's not a real fight i get it but watching habib hold down a gigantic luke Ro luke's a big dude and habib is holding him down with ease it just makes you salivate watching this thing saying habib you got one more in you buddy like we gotta we got to get back out there in that octagon. Like, are you going to fight Charlie Olives? Like, what's happening here? Can we get one more? Can we please? The guy is, he's something else. He really is. Like, I know we make a lot of jokes about Habib on the show. Well, I do. Jesse doesn't. But, you know, I, I horse around because I know people are, are massive Habib fans. And there's a big reason for it. The guy is fantastic. He's, he's a dominating human being. And ha watching him hold down Luke is just nuts. And it's, it's, it's kind of... 
it's kind of sucky that we didn't get to see him compete at welterweight, you know? Uh, but, you know, he did the right thing for himself and his family, so I respect that. But boy, oh boy, as a selfish fan, would I not want to see Habib compete one more time and fight Charlie Olives? The, the more I think about it, you know, I, I, I joke around, and I like Oliveira's run a little bit better. I, I like the whole story about it a little bit better. But, you know, if, if you put the matchup, a matchup that everyone keeps talking about, you know, who would win, who would win, and, and I, I usually dismiss it, because of the fight's never going to happen. But you can't help but think about it, right? And, God, I think Habib would really hurt Oliveira. I, I, like, I think Habib, he could even make it look easy. You know, it's just he was so many levels above the guys at 155. So it's a shame that he did retire when he did. But um, we'll show that video in a second. Oh, hey, what do I got? A Ranger shirt on over here? <laughs> We're up three, nothing. Going into the third period. This is game number seven. Once again, the Rangers come back. Now, I don't want to go too crazy. Knock on wood. It stays like this, you know. But my God, this team has... They, they don't quit. They are fun. They are a fun team to watch. And if they win this game tonight, they move into the final round before the Stanley Cup to play the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, if you're not a hockey fan, that's fine. You know, like, listen, I don't like soccer. I'm just not a soccer fan. It doesn't do anything for me. I think soccer sucks. Um, but if someone were to tell me, hey, man, this is going down, like, for instance, the World Cup or, you know, a lot of times ladies soccer, for some reason, people are talking about. I don't know what the hell that is. But, you know, there are some situations like, watch this game. I'll give it a chance. I'm telling you right now, you might want to start watching the New York Rangers. If they could pull this game off, this could be a very magical season, and it might even actually get you interested in the sport. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. So if you hear me in the, you know, out of nowhere, just ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, like going crazy, it's because the Rangers are this close to defeating an unbeatable team in their own building, the Carolina Hurricanes. They're winning 3 nothing. It's, it's, it's wild. Absolutely wild. All right. Uh, we're going to get to the Habib video. And I just want to talk about the uh, the new merch that Foo can drop. By the way, shout out to the Savage that uh, purchased the new merchandise. But we got the brand new Carnage shirt that dropped on the store. It should be in the carousel down below. I've got the need. The need for Foo and Carnage. Now, that is the uh, tank tops, all different colors we got. Here's the uh, T-shirt the over here. The need for Carnage. And there it is, the brand new simple shirt for the people over there. I got to place a bunch of orders. I want every fucking color, to be honest. But there they are. The Carnage shirts are ready to rock. Check them out. Carnage shirts, they're absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Embrace the Carnage. You know what I'm saying? Embrace the carnage, go on a date with carnage Vote oh. for carnage, make babies with carnage Play, Play jokes on carnage, masturbate with carnage Ejaculate the carnage, propose to the carnage Enjoy pancakes with the carnage, celebrate the carnage That's what we do over here, we bring the carnage When we watch the uh, fight reactions, when we do our interviews, when we do our live shows We got a carnage full filled chat over here, look at the people Look at them Now we got phone lines tonight, uh, an hour and 44 minutes of show extension. Thank you so much to Sonosi. We go back to the saves next Monday. But Sonosi, round of applause to you for keeping this show alive. I want to say a big thank you to the donators. You guys have literally kept us afloat, and I really appreciate it. I know it's tough times. The Hurricanes goalie out the they got a rookie goaltender. They finished. Um, this kid, last game he got pulled. And... Um, you know, when they rattled in the first two goals, you can tell the Rangers kind of had their number. 20 shots, three goals. Anyway, it's in the third period. Uh, bake a cake with porridge. I don't know what that is. Let's go, Life of Logic. Let's go. B-Man's up. Uh, Mike Z is the best. Romero got robbed. <laughs> yeah, th that fight happened. I was going to throw that in the thumbnail. But um, one's in the chat. If you were with us for the uh, Tank Davis fight. I was going to say Tank Abbott. The Tank Davis fight. Uh, he went out there and smoked my man Romero in the sixth round. Just fucked him up, like pretty. It was a very pretty knockout. And I think uh, if you're 
not a boxing fan. You know, he might be one of the guys, like, a casual like myself, <laughs> casual. would continue uh, consuming his combat because um, he's he's good. He is he's he's pretty good. Now I don't know the the talent of Romero. He's got 14 he's, he was 14 and 0. I don't know like much about the guys he fought. It could be a line of cans. N no no clue. But um regardless of the fact he did beat an undefeated guy, so I guess that's cool. Uh one unfortunately Ragefield Virgin. What a name. 6th round, huh? Yep, 6th round. That doesn't sound like a, a demotion to me two joints. Uh let's see, let's see, let's see. Why did Michael Chandler steal Will Brooks kids. <laughs> the fuck? Because he lost. He had to take one of his kids. Or two of his kids. Uh, it was one punch KO. That was cool, but wouldn't even come close to MMA top KO. Yeah, listen. All day, uh, I'm uh, team MMA. Well, Rangers are breaking in. And uh, whiff. Um, yeah, I'm team MMA all day uh, over boxing. But every once I Listen, I, I don't... I don't love boxing, but I can appreciate... A good, skilled, talented athlete, you know, I, and I love the the Tyson Fury situation. I like Deontay Wilder, uh, Joshua. I'm not a fan of. He doesn't really do other than his big muscles. I mean, I, I kind of bores me. Um, New York too physical for Carolina. It's kind of wild that you say that because I don't find New, New York very physical. It, the thing with New York, I don't. Want, <laughs> I could get into this like deep, but the the thing with the Rangers. Is even though the opposing teams spend a lot of time in their zone, the Rangers do a very nice job of at least giving a clear lane for Shostak and their goaltender to see the puck. So, um, and they're very efficient with their their scoring. The Rangers. I mean, they don't really need many shots to put it in the net. Anyway, um, I watch MMA where people actually get knocked out. The dude was standing up, ready to fight, sort of. <laughs> yeah, my man, my man Randall is just like. Just kind of wobbling around, look like a drunk guy stumbling out of a bar, you know. Um, nice save, save by Shostakin. But um, it was entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. like I was insane. Uh, Tank was losing; he was clearly losing the fight, and um, but I was never nervous for him to lose the entire fight because it did feel like he was downloading information. I said it in, in the live action, you know. Tank looked like he was just kind of Mayweathering it, you know, just, you know, lose a couple of rounds here and there, see what we got going on, and then pour it on second half of the fight. And then he just decides six round. Let's, you know, beautiful, like, just, uh, I mean, it was it was just gorgeous. It really was a nice knockout. Uh, Mika Zibanejad is my favorite to watch. Mika is a fucking savage. That's, that's Jesse's favorite player. Without Mika, the Rangers wouldn't be here. And you got to give credit to their goaltending. I mean, Panarin has been kind of MIA. He scored last game. Uh, did you see the booked Ray Liotta for Field of Dreams too? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at that. Could you imagine they built like a movie studio and Ray Liotta just came in as a ghost? If you build it, I will act. All right. Anyway, let's let's watch this. You guys want to watch the Habib thing a little bit? You want to watch this video? I mean, it's on the damn thumbnail. Let's watch it. We're going to take phone lines later. Jesse will be with us as well. And uh, it's good to have you here on a Monday night. Hey, it's Memorial Day. So, you know, I don't know what you guys are doing. I don't know if you're hungover from your barbecues or whatever happened over there. But um, a lot of people are off. Not these guys. Not the fucking holes. Wonderful, wonderful. Whoa, Tropic Tom. I'm happy I didn't get killed during 22 years of service. Happy Memorial Day. Oh also, shout out to Kendale for getting me a shout out, lol. Tropic Tom, a v big, big thank you for your service. And I literally almost bit my knuckle off there. Thank you so much, Tropic. 22 years. That is a, a round of applause, Tropic. 22 years of service. Wow. Wow. I'm glad you're with us, bud, and thank you so much for the donation. Um, what a goal. Rangers got four. Kreider with the backhander. Oh, four nothing. Can we, uh, you know, since it's Memorial Day. I just want to... Um,
I just want to say thank you to those who've served. And to those that have fallen. You are with us in our hearts forever. But I really want to um, just give a shout out to the Carolina Hurricane fans. On Memorial Day. You are dying slowly in front of my eyes. As the score is 4 nothing in a game 7 in your own building. You know, you put up a good fight. You were up in the series. You started off 2-zip in the series, as a matter of fact. But it is Memorial Day, and you are the team that the NHL gods choose to put in the dirt. So, to you, Carolina Hurricanes fans, I wish you a good fucking bye. Let's go. See you later. See you later, guys. Adios. Peace. Um, all right, here we go. Rangers charging again. Here comes... Oh, I see. This is a goal. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's skip back into. I was telling. I was telling Jess. I was like, okay. <laughs> I think it. Listen. Next round. I think I'm gonna just maneuver the show so it doesn't go against uh, the hockey situation. So I don't torment my my friends that are MMA fans. I can't stand this shit. But I, I am sorry. I marched in the fucking 1994 parade for God's sakes. I mean, I, I have a right to be a little happy right now. It's been a long time. Um, okay. Let's get back into the stuff over here. Let's go over to the Habib Nurmagomedov and Luke Rockhold grappling exchange. Let me know in the chat if you guys or gals witnessed this beautiful moment between two men. It was very homoerotic. I, I beat off twice to it. But um, let me know in the chat if you've seen this. Sorry, my phone is rattling. <clears throat> Uh, Chandler made Habib uh, retire. Let that sink in. Uh, no one don't care. Hope they show the joke. It's a hug fest. Okay, so so Habib Nurmagomedov and Luke Rockhold, like we said in the beginning of the show, they re reunited at the gym, and um, it was it was a very uh, interesting moment here. Let's let's break this thing down. And see if we could take anything from it. You know, some people out there are like, they're just training together, bro. Like, I mean, just cut it, cut Luke some slack. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. I, hug you. <laughs> I fucking love that. You know, this is this is the part of Habib that I absolutely love. That feels good. He gets really tight. <laughs> Luke is glued to the fucking mat. Glued. This is a former 155er. Barely made it, but former 155er. Fiver holding down a guy that's fought a light heavy. You know, I know he's a middleweight, but he's still, you know, he's a, he's a giant middleweight. That's four. I mean, he's a big man. And Luke's got ground game, too. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. I mean, this is crazy. It's just wild for me to see. Now, I understand he's got side control. You know, it's a strong position here. But Habib is making this look easy. All of a sudden, Luke practice. Now, now this is interesting over here. I wish we kind. I wish it didn't cut. I wish we could see like what happened here. Like why was Habib on the bottom? Clever editing, maybe or something. You know, I don't know. I kind of wish I saw the whole sequence. But regardless, like uh, Luke, it looks like he kind of let him back up. So what I'm thinking here is in this exchange, Luke was in the dominant position, and Habib is like, okay, you know, you think it's over? I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> it ain't over yet. Don't you not over yet. 
<laughs> and then they fucked. Um, but no, seriously though, let me know what you guys think about this. Now I understand that there's there's more to this. You know, this is not everything that happened in the, the situation. This might be the only times that Habib had the dominant part. But still, still to me, like to be able to control a guy that much bigger than you, no matter how tired he is. I mean, still it's it, it's still fascinating. And listen, let's be serious. Habib is soaked in sweat here, so it's not like Habib j is fresh. Going in there, unless he dumped a bucket of water over his head. You know, Habib is drenched in sweat. Crazy, man. Habib is one of the most special grappling UFC fighters ever. It really, I mean, like, I, I've, I've had so many situations where I've, you know, I've, I've poked fun at Habib and joked around at the fans and stuff like that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause and I'm going to give you a night here and just say this. This guy over here, he beats Charles Oliveira. Easily beats Charles Oliveira. It's not even a question. Charles Oliveira, fantastic uh, what he has done in the UFC. His bounce back, his run back, his comeback. But, I mean, this guy is, this guy's not, he's not fighting. He's just holding him down. He's cracking some jokes in the beginning. When he gets back up, he chases him over, just slams him against the fucking wall. And just, like, owns him like a bitch. Like, like Luke doesn't have a shot. You can't stop that. You can't fucking stop that. It's it's kind of wild, man. Brother, I miss you. I hug you. Brother, I miss you. I hug you. All right, so I want to get your opinion in the chat here. You know, I, I want to get your opinion on this, this whole situation with Habib, because I, me watching this, I'm like, damn, man, why do you retire? Why? Why did this man retire? And and why couldn't we see this guy at, at welterweight? Habib Nurmagomedov had a he had a chance to do things that we've never seen before. He had a chance to dominate two divisions, like dominate. He could have done it, but didn't want that welterweight smoke. I don't blame him. Kamaru's a savage, and um, you know, Pop died, and he he honored his mother. And he moved on. Respectful. R respectable move by Habib. But as a fan, being selfish, fuck, man, I wish I'd seen more. And because he left, you know, it's like there's going to be no argument. There's going to be a guy that defends the belt more, becomes dominant in the weight class, and Habib's just going to fall into the shadows. He retired because his mother's wish. That's correct. Charles Oliveira would give Habib problems. I don't think so. As much as I would love to agree with you, I, I mean, I would love to. I don't think so. I really don't. I think Habib just rolls straight through him. Charles Oliveira, he's content with fighting off his back with the jiu-jitsu. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. They just missed an open net, Carolina, on a power play. They are doomed. Oh, there's the goal. There's the fucking goal. All right, 4-1. I mean, it was just a matter of time. I, if you're missing shots like that, at least they redeem themselves. All right, 4-1. Okay, hey, this, this is a lot of time left in this game. 11:49. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Luke is uh, four years older than Habib, and plus he sucks now. <laughs> I don't know. He's still a big fucking strong man. That could, Well, I think he could still compete. He could easily wrestle. Fuck Charles. Did you see what, I mean, what Luke has done in the UFC when it comes to his grappling? He made middleweights crumble. Yeah, I did, Carl. I, get, I I feel like I should shut it off. Habib uh, makes that weight at 155. Neither can uh, neither. Habib can't make weight at 155. You know what? <laughs> you, you might be right about that. Habib is looking pretty. He's looking pretty big. This guy is nowhere near 155 right now. So yeah, to get himself back down there, probably yeah, probably be impossible. So yeah, we're talking about we're basically talking about something that will never happen. You know, he, if he had trouble before hitting the 155 pound weight class, you know, getting older is not going to make it any easier. Oh boy! Oh, break away! Oh! 
Oh my god, he don't just score. Oh my god. 5-1. Oh. Let me just say this. Tampa Bay Lightning shit in their pants right now. They just swept the Panthers. They're all fucking... They're all cold at home. Rangers are coming off of, you know, a big seventh game win. No one wants to face these guys. The more dangerous team is the team that keeps winning those game sevens. Not the teams that sweep in teams. This team is... This, they're wild. Uh, Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay beat Colorado in six to win the cup. Rangers are losing today. I am going to... Listen, Chrome, man. Listen, you have to admit, this is a this is a Stanley Cup team right here. This is a team that can win the cup. I've been saying it all year. This team is fucking special. Uh, Habib hanging out with DC too much. He's probably 20 plus. Yeah, I mean... Oh, shit. <laughs> I almost ended the show. All right, see you later. <laughs> see you later, guys. Um... Yeah, the idea of him making 155 again is... It's probably almost impossible for the dude. But, you know, seeing stuff like this, it really makes you... It makes you, it really makes you want to see him come back. You know? Alright, I'm going to put the poll in the chat. And then we can put this to bed. <clears throat> I'm going to put this poll in the chat. And we'll put this to bed. And we can finally move on from this. The only reason why I'm talking about it is because um, this video released and... I think... We got to show the man some respect because a lot of us are going, Charles Oliveira would win anyway and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it kind of brings you back down to earth when you see stuff like that. You know, how dominating the man is on the ground. May not be uh, everyone's cup of tea when it comes to style of fighting, Habib. Like, I think Charles Oliveira is a, a more exciting fighter, like altogether. Because, I mean, if it was just a complete striking fight with Charles Oliveira, I'd be on the edge of my seat. The guy could fucking bang now. He clearly can put together combinations. He's got power. He dropped Gaethje, you know, in his hands. Um, Charles, Charles got pop in those hands. So on top of his grappling, you know, he's always looking for the finish, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. You know, a lot of respect to a guy like that. A lot, you know, as a fan, that's just more please, pleasing for me. Uh, let's see. How Luke isn't a great example. Uh, for what? Wonderful, wonderful. Tropic Tom. Need a new Dono song with I Miss You, I Hug You in it. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do need something like that, right? Let's listen. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Actually, you know what? I could, I, I, I hear it. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Okay, I'll make it. <laughs> I hear it. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. I miss you, I hug you. Yeah, I, I could do that. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. Or I could get rid of the uh, $2 Nate donation. But that's wonderful, wonderful. I hug this. Brother, I miss you, I hug you. I could hear it. <laughs> I hear the song. B-Man! Wonderful, wonderful. Life or death. <laughs> Who are you picking Khabib versus Zeusman in the octagon at 170 pounds? So, I'm gonna... Man... I'm going to say Usman, and the only reason why I'm going to say that is I truly do believe the reason Habib didn't go up to Ali Abdelaziz, guys going at it, you know, Habib didn't have to go up. He didn't need to really go up. But, you know, when you're talking the, the greatness, the pound for pound kings, you know, like, you know, guys, you know, going to that next level to solidify legacy, you know, that's a different story. If he would have went up and smoked Usman, I mean, that would have been nuts. That would have been crazy. Like, there would be no more debates if he would have done something like that. But because he left the way he did, there's debates. I, I do believe he did not go up because these bigger grapplers. I mean, who, Usman is a fucking grappler. He's a wrestler. And his hands have gotten better. I think Usman, 
I think Usman Mountain wins. Habib, what do you think? Brother, I miss you. I hug you. Okay. So I'm going to go Kamaro. Let me know in the chat. This is interesting. <clears throat> the poll that we got together here. Check this out. So, brother, I miss you. I hug you. 53% over Oliveira. Now 57 up to the 43%. That is very close. That's like, that's ridiculously close. We'll let this thing stick up there. And we'll, we'll, we'll finally finish the debate tonight. We, we will put, we'll put this to bed. And I'm not saying who you, do you want to win. Who would win? Who would win? I am with Habib. I am. I would like to see Oliveira win. I'm with Habib. But let me know in the chat who would win, Kamaru or Habib. Out of curiosity. Fantasy fights are putting together now. I think Charles will win more as a ways to win. It doesn't... It More ways means nothing. When... It, I mean, I, we've all learned this already. More ways to win doesn't matter with this. Do you understand? Like, you can't... If, if this is your specialty, if you're a one-trick pony and you have an iron jaw, no one... No, it, you could have 400 ways to win. When it comes to the world of the UFC, you're not going to beat this. You know? That, that's the problem. This beats jujitsu. This beats good striking. This beats everything. Uh, this guy acts acting like uh, he must. Oh, he know most. You know Habib only beat strikers. Oh, boy. You're telling me that jujitsu is going to beat this? I mean, listen, I understand. I would rather see Oliveira win because I like Oliveira's story. I enjoy Oliveira's story. No hate against Habib. I just think Oliveira's story is pretty cool. You know, that bounce back, comeback situation starting at 20. You know, had a couple of L's along the way. Bumps and bruises. And now he's like dominating. Uh, honestly, we don't know. We do. We do. We've seen it. Like, when you got a guy like this... That could hold down fucking light heavyweights, big middleweights with ease. That's a problem. And this is one of the reasons why if Islam Makachev, we still have to see more from Islam, but if Islam could control on top as good as this guy can do it, and Islam's got a little better striking than Habib, that's the key. You know, that's that's the key. It really is. As much as I I have you know, I have joked about Habib before in the past. I've gone on and on. If anyone would want to find the angle that Habib would lose a fight, it would be me. But you can't... It, I mean... You know, if they could make the same weight... We don't know if Habib could make the weight anymore. But if they could, I don't understand how you wouldn't pick Habib. Unless it's uh, recency bias. You could be the best striker in the world. Habib's never, never bled. He lost two rounds. You know? All the arguments that everyone has online. It's not false. This is... this is You don't want to fight this. You know? You don't want to fight something like that. So, yeah. I mean, I would, I would be very confident that Habib would win. In fact, I think I'm picking Islam. If they do fight. If Islam versus um, Oliveira fights. I think I'm picking, picking Islam. I want to see Oliveira when I find him more exciting. But I think I pick Islam. It's a great fight. It really is. I, they ha UFC has to put that together, for sure. But yeah, I don't. I don't understand. Like, I understand. Like a lot of people like to go to. And, and yeah, Poirier was a. It's a. Like he only, he doesn't he doesn't fight grapplers. Poirier is a black belt in jujitsu. He's a black belt in jujitsu. I mean, think about that. I don't. I don't understand. How much do I think Luke uh, weighs right there? I mean, well, he's getting ready for the Palo fight, so I'd imagine he's trying to trim down. But he's got to be... Shit. 
I don't think he's under 200. When's that Palo fight? It's got to be 200 plus. BJJ doesn't always measure great in MMA, so then that means Charles doesn't win. That's what Charles got, BJJ, and, and good striking. Like, really good BJJ and good striking. You know? Listen, we, we, we know it. We, we know the answer. It's a matter if we want to accept it, right? And I get, I get why people are kind of sick of the whole Habib thing, because honestly, a lot of the fans in this situation drive you nuts. Everyone thinks the guy's the God's gift to, to the UFC, you know, Habib. And it's, it's frustrating when you see a guy unblemished and, and the fans are rah rahing all the time. It gets nauseating after a while. So what we do is we try to find ways to say, okay, well, Habib will lose this. Habib will lose. I made the joke about Habib leaving because of uh, Michael Chandler came in or he, he ran from Charles Oliveira. Like, I've made that joke as well, too. But if I'm being, com I'm being completely serious tonight, right? Put all the jokes aside. This style right here, this smothering Sambo style of fighting, if you could do this in a dominating way, th there is really not much of an answer unless you combat it with your own Sambo style. There's no way. It's, it's really crazy to watch. Now, like we said earlier, this this tape over here, I'm, there's a lot more to the tape that we didn't see. Luke could have had, had uh, major dominant positions earlier on. The way Habib was on his back there and then got up quickly, it looked like they were done. And then Habib gets up and he kind of got, you know, maybe he was a little frustrated by the exchange. So, you know, they conveniently show the clips where Habib looks good. I get it. But Jesus, holding a man down like this, like a guy like Luke Rockhold, who's actually a really good grappler. It's pretty impressive to me. Running for his life. Get away from me, bro. <laughs> get away from me. Habib's like a fuck. It's like a wild animal. Let's look at the poll here. Let's see where we're at. Right now, 5-1 to one Rangers, 4.30 left in the third period. Game number seven. Habib's going up to 60-40. to 40. All right, He's pulling away a little bit. Interesting. And when we open up the phone lines, I think we'll have a really good conversation about this. And let's make this a stream where we put this to bed. Wow, that was a rough sight. <laughs> there was a kid in the... Damn ESPN. What are you doing? ESPN's showing the kid crying in the stands with the Carolina jersey on. Oh my God. Dude, that's brutal. The kid's going to grow up and he's going to be that kid. <laughs> crying. It's fucked up. But yeah, this is going to be a stream where we put this to bed because they're probably not going to fight. I mean, they're not going to fight. Uh, Rangers got this. Let's see. Let's see. Charles doesn't have enough striking power to hurt Habib. Habib has all the other tools just to destroy Charles. Yeah, all you need... I understand, like, you want to be a well-balanced fighter in most cases, but Habib's an exception. He just needs that solid face and that strong grappling. And he's, got a, he's got a pretty tight jab, too. That, that thing... Well, not tight, but strong jab. Uh, but it's edited. Luke got up uh, on top when he got up. Yes, I said that before. We don't know... What the what happened here? Both situations could have been, you know, like basically they put you in a bad spot, like so that they say, okay, it's your turn, Luke. So you got to get bottom position. Habib's on top. You got to get out of it. Those are drills, right? And this could have been the same thing here too, where, um, okay, now Habib's on bottom. Here, here is the problem though. Whoever released this video, I don't know who released it. Clearly, someone from the gym. I'll leave Delazies. I don't know, but it's you know it's edited in a way. Where you're only seeing, you know, Habib's plus side. I would love to see the whole thing unedited. And I'm sure there's a video out there. Let's see, what's this? This is the same. This just looks like a different day. It's a different shirt. Jiu Jitsu, it would be called Luke Rockhold. <laughs> It's okay. Ask Luke what happened today. What did he say? If Sambo... <laughs> if Sambo was easy, call it, it would be home. called Jiu-Jitsu. It would be called Luke Rockhold. <laughs> <laughs> if Sambo... So this is an older video. When he was actually in the UFC, right? If Sambo was easy... He was going to say it was going to be called Jiu-Jitsu, but he says it was called... <laughs> it would be called Luke Rockhold. <laughs> 
Ah, it's fucked. That's so fucked. Can't play this because of the fucking music, but... I mean, he's like, ask Luke what happened today. You know, I, I, <laughs> Luke, poor Luke, all these videos are circular. Like these, these are training videos. Who's releasing this shit, man? It's, it's kind of fucked, right? It's kind of messed up. It's kind of messed up. I mean, look at that shit. Luke trying to get up. It would be called Luke Rock Hold. All right. I mean, I don't know. What kind of excuses we want now? 347 left. And Carolina scores goal number two. So now we got five to two. Oh, boy. I think it's friends. He is not unbeatable, says Bjorn. I mean, Bjorn, listen. You know, the numbers don't lie, right? <clears throat> they never post a Habib stand-up videos. I mean, here's the thing. I know it's not fun, but what do you think Habib does? Do you think, like, he's constantly working on his stand-up? No. He is just polishing up that fucking grinding, grappling game, and then he does his stand-up here and there. You know, like... He's, I don't, does he even, he probably spars limited, like, you know, he, he barely spars the guy, because he, he's so goddamn good at the grappling, he just gotta get you down to the ground or up against the fence, and you won't even move, you know, so, it's like, if Habib was going to box, then I'd say, oh, okay, but you don't have to, it's MMA, you know, it, it doesn't matter, it's, it's a mixed bag of tricks. Wonderful, wonderful. We tee you up, Big Moss. We hit the like. We hit the like <laughs> goals. Habib would absolutely murk Olives. Charlie would get murked. De Bronx gets starched. Charles gets rocked and sent to hell. He be too strong. Smash. He be about 155 beats anyone. 170. Who knows? Yeah, 170 is just speculation, right? We can't. We can never really. I mean, we can say, okay, maybe. You know, if he's holding down middleweights and whatever. But that's that's complete speculation. At 155, I would love to see him fight Charles. You know what? I would love to see him fight Islam. Like, we're all talking about Charles Oliveira. I would love to see him fight Islam. Now that... Where do I sign for that? That's the fight. Never happened. But that's... That's Luke versus uh, Ray. I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, two Jedis. Give me the two Jedis... Uh, it's it's Obi Wan versus Luke Skywalker. Carolina pulled the goalie. Three minutes left. Five two. I mean they had to pull it. Let's get an empty netter. Come on, boys. Um. You know that's why aren't we talking about that? Who wins? Makachev or Habib? Let me know in the chat. Charles Stevens. Yeah, right. He's not even the champ. <laughs> Technically, Habib's still the champ, right? Really was a wrestler who got beat by elite wrestlers. Uh, I need Habib versus Islam to happen, but that'll be telling. Yeah, that that will like never. There's the empty net goal. Let's go, baby. The New York Rangers are locked in for the next series. Oh boy. I'm getting a little emotional today, thinking about it. I was trying to like rush through the shower, get back to the game, set up the stream. It's like it's so fucking cool. This is so. This is why. There, one reason why I love mixed martial arts, uh, the UFC especially. The one reason why I love the UFC is it's every weekend. Last weekend we missed one, but we had boxing. There's always something, right? But UFC is almost every single weekend. The problem with the UFC is if if we could have some tournament action, you know, sprinkled, you know, into the UFC, um, maybe things would get even more interesting. When you're looking at, you know, team sports, the NHL, NFL, you know, baseball, you know, basketball, whatever. 
Um, you know, you play a whole season and then you got those playoffs and everything's on the line. It's all crazy. The UFC, you have like titles that you fight for, but it's, it doesn't feel like a gauntlet that you're going through to get to those titles, right? It's It just feels like, oh, if you have the right social media following or if you win in the right way, you'll skip lines and shit. And you don't get that, um, I don't know, I, I feel like you don't get that edge of your seat. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it is different. It's, it, this is where team sports actually is above the UFC, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the actual big fights and, um, you know, comeback victories, knockouts, like a knockout is just like crazy or a crazy submission is just so much fun to watch. But there is a big difference, though, between watching team sports and this stuff in the UFC. Carnage with the Rangers. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. They do unofficial tournaments now. and I mean, not really. If you really think. I, like, Dana's kind of, like, they said they're going to do one. Uh, isn't it going to be like a, an international tournament that they're going to be putting together? I think it's to, just to get into the UFC or something that they're looking to do. Like, for instance, if you're going to do a tournament and Charles Oliveira is stripped of the belt, which he shouldn't be, but he is. I mean, right now, technically, he's not the champion. Now is the time to do 155. They had a chance to do it before. They, they, they dropped the ball. We have another chance to do it again. I say put it together. You know, nothing's really set in stone. I understand Islam versus Oliveira is the fight. But could you imagine, like, you have a tournament. You put Islam on one side of the tournament. You have Oliveira on the other side. Both guys win all the fights that they're supposed to win. They meet each other at the top. You have this momentum, this steamrolling. Like, these two guys are on a crash course for each other. Like, that is interesting to me. You know, that's more edge of your seat uh, stuff. That's just, I think that would work. Let me know if you would like to see a tournament at lightweight. I think now's the time to do it. I know it wouldn't be fair to Oliveira, really, but technically he missed weight. Oh, fuck. This is so cool, man. Six seconds left. And Carol in, in Carolina, game seven, they fucking did it. Damn, man. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Uh, tournament and MMA don't work. Fighters who win always are hurt. Th that that's the problem. That is a that is a problem. It got injuries, just ruins everything. But I mean, let's look at the guys up top here. At one fifty five, let's go. Listen, you're not following the rankings anyway. Like they're kind of going out the window anyway. So let's let's have a little fun. Let's, let's, I mean, you got so many interesting characters. This might get like Dustin Poirier, like rejuvenated. You know, Justin Gaethje, who's on an, you know, he just can't win that belt. Maybe this, this fires him back up again. But you know, Oliveira, Poirier, Gaethje, Makachev, Chandler, Darius, RDA, former champion, Connor, Tony, throw him in the fucking mix too. F Fiziev. Come on. You could do that. You can put something together. Or just put in an eight-man tournament. I don't fucking know. But I would like to see it. I really would. You have enough guys where you can piece together something fun. Hopefully no one gets hurt. Have someone on standby or something, you know, in, in certain situations. Like an interesting guy. Have a little fun with it. The only thing that sucks about it is is Charles Oliveira, like he has a chance to pass the Habib defending streak. But now that he's uh, one of the coolest scenes in sports, by the way, the the handshake between teams, love this tradition. The winning and losing team in an elimination game when it's over, you know you're beating the shit out of each other throughout the whole series. And then they line up and just shake hands. And you see that respect. It's like the cool, like all sports should be like this. Like you see it in fighting. You see guys, not all the time, but this in hockey every time. No matter what. You're knocked out of a series. You give respect. And, and this, is, this is fucking cool, man. Love seeing this. Now you don't want to be on the other end. The losing end. They should do this in every sport. Football's ridiculous. Football, they're like, you know... It's just uh, reporters and fucking all these athletes just going together. And there's a couple of hugs, but everyone's just scattered around. There should be, so, there's so much respect in hockey. 
It's got the best fucking trophy. This should be in like basketball, baseball, all these teams should be doing this shit. Uh, it's a lot better than Chandler doing four backflips around Tony's lifeless body. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying before. I will move on from the hockey. I am so sorry. If you're not a hockey fan, I know this is probably nauseating me talking about it. You only got a couple more weeks, and then I'm you got my undivided attention back in UFC. <clears throat> UFC flyweight tournament uh, scheduled already. Is that true? Or no, isn't that the uh, to get into the UFC? Even after the most bitter series, they shake hands. It's pretty incredible. It is like some of the coolest. Sometimes you get chills watching, especially the Stanley Cup. I mean, you make it to the big dance and you fucking lose. And now you got to line up and shake their hands. Singapore goes down on June 11th as the first pay-per-view event in South uh, Southeast Asia. And during the fight week lead up, UFC will host groundbreaking win and advance tournament. So, yeah, I think that's to get in the UFC. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm almost positive that tournament that they're putting together is is to have a spot in the roster, which is still cool. Makes it interesting. Wonderful, wonderful. Tropical Tom coming in. That crybaby kid should have worn a strainer on his face if he really <laughs> wanted his team to win. Plus, it would have saved him the embarrassment of the cameras. Fail. Delicious Carolina tears. <laughs> I tell you what, man. The little kid inside of me is so... You have no idea how excited I am. I'm like giddy. I am I am absolutely giddy that they're doing... They're, they, they keep advancing. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. The road to the UFC. Okay, so it is to get in. Uh, I'm glad you got me into hockey this year. I've been watching since the last two months. Hell yeah, Sober Carl. Listen, never too late, man. Never too late. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. They should add playing chess between rounds in MMA. <laughs> All right, that's a good question, though. Like, what would be something that you would add to the UFC? What's something you want to see added to the UFC? What do you need? Like, whether it's forcing them to do something, a ritual after the fight. I don't know. Uh, add something between rounds. You want to see, like, open scoring. Like, what what is something that you think uh, maybe getting rid of the... Uh, you know, the no 12 to 6 elbows or the soccer kick, bring back soccer kicks and headbutts. I don't know. But, like, what's something you want to add to it? Or maybe I want to, I really would like to see something that's completely out of the ordinary that we could, like, say, hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Let's see if we got some good ideas in the chat. A wet t shirt contest? I would, a topless ring girls, I would like to see. Like, just fucking go for it. It's pay per view. Like, you know what I'm saying? Put a parental advisory on it. Have topless ring girls. What are we doing here? Right? Two reasons why Habib retired. I uh, can no longer make weight. Uh, Iron Michael Chandler. <laughs> I want to see point taken from people stalling fights like Holly Holmes. Okay. I like that. Tony's most over f uh, the face kick KO. But he just can't get a horrible sound. Oh, wait. He just can't get the horrible sound of Chandler backflip out of his head. I want the UFC to show the f faces. Hold on. And introduce the judges. Every fight to keep him honest. Yeah, just have the judges like three faces on the screen with the score next to their face. Okay, I'm down with that. Loser gets cut from the roster. Survival of the fittest. Oh my god. Biting allowed from the bottom position. Stop women's MMA. Just get rid of a woman. Okay. Well, Eagle FC could just watch. Percentage that Habib versus Oliveira will happen. Smoke breaks between rounds. Open bar for walk. <laughs> Exit rounds instead of decisions. Like overtime. I like it. I don't hate it. Like what about like, mm, you know what would be cool? I know now we're like, we're going out there, but let's fuck it. Let's go for it. If it's a, okay. <sighs> yeah, this ha there has to be some sort of outcome, right? So instead of having a decision, like, say if, if, hmm. I'm trying to think now. Like, do like a sixth round where you have to, like, you, like, you roll a dice and, like, whatever it pops on, it could be only striking, only grappling. You know, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something different. Or play a game of war. I, I don't know. You know, there could be something. 
Or like one round strictly grappling. Like, I don't fucking know. One round just striking. Flying knees to down. Hold on a second. Uh, knees to the ground opponent soccer kick headbutts. I wouldn't mind though knees to grounded opponents. I think that's a stupid rule. The people would stop grounding themselves. Tag team fighting. Dwarf boxing. No time rounds. Fight until the end. The corners fight between rounds. <laughs> Habib should fight at welterweight or middleweight. Legit tag team fights. That would be that would be kind of cool. I wouldn't I wouldn't hate that. Like have that I I don't hate it. Like I'm not a big wrestling fan, but I'm kind of cool with that. Like like you could actually grab onto the fence to try to pull yourself up to to hit the tag. And you see the guy leaning over the top trying to fucking tag him, and then they they dramatically like tumble over the fence, and the other guy's got to try to climb up and roll over. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Like, you got to put padding, like, on the outside of the cage. This way, when they roll over, they don't break their neck. That'd be hilarious. It was like a crane. Like, like, like the, those little toy cranes that kids play with. You know, try to get the little toy. Like, a crane goes in and just lifts up the guy that just, you know, hit the tag. Just lifts him up and just pulls him out. I'm in, I'm in for that. One less minute per round. So more kind of like boxing. So I don't know. I'm kind of cool with the, the five minute rounds. I don't have a problem with that. Allow whiffable bats to be used if needed. Headbutting allowed if you say I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the best. Some good. Uh, we got some good suggestions here. We might have to submit these to, to Dana White. Y you got to think like we had like the UFC has access to the Internet. You would have to think that someone has like a, a, a fucking great idea that they could add to the UFC that would really separate them, you know? Let them fight in the shoes. Oh, hold on. Let them fight in shoes on st in street clothes. Tommy Lee playing drums upside down before the fight. Like every fight is just Tommy Lee upside down. Just playing the drum. <laughs> Mandatory blowjobs. Celebrity guest appearance for refs. Might as well the way some of these fights are refed. I would like to see celebrity MMA fights, though. I wouldn't hate that. Like, they have celebrity boxing. Why don't they have celebrity MMA? I'd rather see... I would rather see a celebrity MMA fight because it's more like a real fight. Where, where You know, with boxing, it's kind of, you know, it's just clunky people throwing their hands around. I think if they're fighting in a cage, then they should be able to grab the cage to help themselves out. If you can jump off it to launch yourself, why not let them grab it? Yeah, all right. I have no problem with that. Get rid of the women's division and add celebrities. <laughs> I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah, I, I kind of wish that, um, oh, you know what? <laughs> and we have a female guest on Wednesday, so that that worked. But he, she's a... She's a um, a BKFC boxer. So this could be an interesting interview Wednesday. But isn't it funny how BKFC, any bare knuckle ladies boxing, even BYB, the, the female bare knuckle boxing is better than the guys. It's so weird. And then you look at MMA and female MMA is, is not nearly as good as the, the guys MMA for the most part, at least. It's kind of odd how that works. Maybe all female fighters should just go to bare knuckle. Yeah, celebrity deathmatch was awesome. When I was a kid, I loved that. BBW Fight League? I, I want heavyweight women's... I wanted that. Like, I've wanted that for a very long time. I want to give a shout-out to our sponsors here before we open up some phone lines. I thank you for coming in. As I, I want to get your opinions on Habib versus Charles Oliveira. Put it to rest, finally. We showed the video of Habib wrestling with Luke Rockhold. Um, in training and we'll get your thoughts about that and other random crazy stuff uh, use my bookie.ag if you'd like to gamble okay they are uh, sponsoring us and uh, we enjoy using them I think their website is pretty wonderful 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 we've had actually the only reason why we're working with my bookie and this is actually a true story people from the community send us there I didn't really know much about my bookie all I knew was Colby Covington was talking about them and little Chell Sonnen back in the day as well. Some other fighters. 
But um, I didn't know much about my bookie. And uh, people from our community said, hey, this is what I use. So I'm like, all right. We reached out to them. And I've noticed that their website is pretty fucking easy to use. Super simple. Uh, MyBookie.ag, if you use our promo code M-A-H-O-L-E-S, you get a 100% match on your first deposit. MyBookie.ag. Give it a shot. There's a link in the description down below. And let me know how you like it. The goods and bets. Whatever you'd like uh, to do with it. I've been completely transparent in my review of MyBookie.ag. And I firmly believe that if you consistently bet on MMA, you'll be fine. Just don't, like, just pump the brakes on all the parlays and props. Those are suckers' bets. I understand people like that big hit. I say play it slow and steady, baby. Because we're up $413 out of the 1000 that we put in. And we've been betting, let's see, what do we, let me refresh this. How much money did we gamble so far? Three thousand two hundred and six dollars. Is that up to date? I feel like it's not. Oh, here we go. All right, three thousand eight hundred ten dollars and eleven cents. Three thousand eight hundred bucks, and we're still up four hundred thirteen dollars. I mean, think about that crazy amount of gambling, and and any bets that we made outside of the UFC is when we lost. I bet on the Rangers. I did blackjack. All losses. But in the UFC, we're up. It's just easier to bet on the UFC. So if you want to make a couple of bucks, try MyBookie.ag. The promo code is M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S. Make some money, friends. Sheath underwear. Wonderful, wonderful stuff over there. Wonderful, wonderful. It feels so nice in your bottoms. Your uh, penis and your vagina will thank me later. As uh, sheath underwear is top quality, premium stuff. And we have a promo code for 20% off. MMA, H O L E S. I used a little pouch in the front. I put my little peach through it, separate the action. So, you know, you don't got things cross contaminating or you don't, you know, you're not, you're not sweating more, you know, putting your sweat in different spots. You like, you know, there's some things you don't want to keep together. So try out sheath underwear. And if you want to use it as traditional underwear, you could do that as well. Comfortable either way. Um, the link is in the description down below. The promo code is MMA, H O L E S for 20% off. Head Rush, same thing, 20% off promo code M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S for Head Rush. Shout out to Head Rush. They got some nice stuff over there. Summertime's coming around, so get your uh, shorts and tank tops, your tees, whatever you like. Look like a badass. 20% off promo code M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S. And ESPN Plus. Well, that's not ESPN Plus. We got to do another debate. Yeah, you know, this reminded me. I got to set something up for another debate. MMA debate. Uh, ESPN Plus, link in the description if you'd like to watch the events this weekend. There's uh, Rosenstrike versus Volkov. Now, before we go into the phone calls, uh, I want to just talk about this card real quick. Auction off my used sheath. We have, I have, uh, I have don like, I've taken a, a nice donation for my underwear before, and... The pirate left the community afterwards. Like, he has my underwear and died from the stench, I think. 14 fights on this card, and nothing, nothing stands out to me. Nothing. Like, I was scrolling through this, like, oh, damn. So I'm going to do all my picks on Friday where I, where I give you, you know, my locked-in tapology picks on goat milk. Decent matchups, but scary. I was thinking about going the only underdog that, actually, in, conveniently, it's the, it's the main event. But Rosenstrike... As an under, I don't hate. I think both of these guys, they all lost. They both, like, look at who they lost to. Uh, Tom Aspinall, who's a clear contender. And uh, Cyril Gunn, who just fought for the belt. And he looks unbeatable until he got wrestle-fucked by Nganu. Then you look at Rosenstrike, Curtis Blades. Well, my man Curtis looks pretty damn good lately. Uh, Cyril Gunn, that's same thing. And then the champion, Francis Nganu. So both guys, they're losing to the top guys at heavyweight. This is a good matchup. See where they stand. Like, whoever wins this one takes a big step forward. The other one takes a big step uh, backwards. And I kind of like Biggie Boy. He's a little older in this fight but uh, and a little undersized. But I feel like, I don't know, I just I feel good things from him. I feel like a knockout could be here. Not confident, so I don't know if I'm going to put money. But, um... This should be a, a nice matchup. I, for some reason, I'm just seeing Volkov getting clipped. So we'll see how this thing goes. I don't recommend you putting money on any of these fights. So I want to know in the chat, 
what you're putting your money on. I'm actually going to fucking back out of this unless I see something last minute, you know, at the weigh-ins or something. But these fights over here, I was thinking about, like, Zumagalov. You know, he's got the uh, the Russian or a Kajistanian background, excuse me. You know, but then, I'm like, he hasn't been on a good run, and, and Molina's pretty good. So then I was like, all right, I'm not going to do it on him. I don't fucking know, man. Anyone stand out for you guys? Thank you. Gavin Macias has been a member for 12 months, baby. Come on. Let's go, Gavin. He says, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Biggie Boy wins second round knock. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm like having this weird feeling that Biggie Boy gets, he gets a, uh, when was the last time he knocked someone out? I don't know. I feel like he's got something to prove here. His knockout was 11 months ago. Sakai. And Junior Dos Santos was a year and nine months ago. Fantasy matchup, Usman versus Whitaker. I would love to see that. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Big meteor shower tonight. Is that true? Let me know, Casey, if that's true. Because I will go, like, we have some, our sky over here is awesome, man. So it's, it's pretty clear. We caught a couple of meteor showers, and it's so, it's so fun to watch. Wondering, wondering. Might put money on Biggie. Yeah, he's the only one. I don't I don't feel a lock here though. I don't like I feel I feel like I think I'm gonna take this card off. It sucks because it's 14 fights. But I I don't know. When I'm I feel like I want action, but if nothing really stands out, I don't think it's worth it. So I might just enjoy the fights for what they are. But we got 14 of them. Someone was throwing this question on Twitter. I want to ask you guys in the chat. Let me put time on this clock here. Hour and 44 minutes. All right. So this is the last of the saves. A big thank you to Sanosi, man. We've got an hour 40 on the clock. Uh, big thank you to Sanosi for being a savage and dropping the $1,000 donation, continuing our, our streak. It's been it's been quick. It went real quick. So we'll take some phone calls. Um, but... Uh, What's it called? I might even just go two hours tonight. We'll see. Uh, or three hours, I should say, altogether. What would you rather see? Someone threw this on Twitter. I thought it was a, it was a good question. Would you rather see um, like fights every single weekend, but they're spread out? Like the talent is spread out. So no, no weekends off. Or would you let, rather see like two or three times a month but just banging cards like when those cards happen they're just fire like just banger 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 what would you rather see let me know in the chat more fights with a spread out talent pool or less fights and just a casual delight I might have to make this a poll All right, two to three a bang of cards. I want to see a fight card with 20 fights. <laughs> it's a lot of fights. They need to put less talent under better talent. Every weekend, man. More fights, more fights. Just cancel women. <laughs> uh, more would be cool. The unknowns can have bangers too. That's, see, that's the thing. I, I would probably like every weekend. I, I would. I mean, it's it's good for us. It gives us content, you know, each and every weekend. But there, are, there, like you always get those like surprise sleeper cards that you look at, you're like, oh, this card's trash, and then it winds up being just a, a fire night, and it feels like you discovered hidden treasure. Like it's like, oh, this is so cool, man. Like, so I would like it every weekend. I would go with that. I don't need you know a banger every you know every time. If that works, uh, I mean, less MMA holes than every weekend. Actually, I think if they were, so honestly, I, I got to be honest with you. I feel like if they were banger cards two or three times a month, I think our community would grow even quicker. Because there's that anticipation. And then everyone looks forward to that night. Like you stop what you're doing. Now, because fights are almost every weekend, you know, people got lives. You know, I, unlike me, I don't have a life, so I'm cool. I'll watch all the cards. But some people actually have lives. Or work those nights, which would be a you know a problem. 
So at least, it's, at least if it's two or three times a month, you could, uh, you know, arrange your plans around it. So I could understand why those people would like it two or three times a month. Stack says this uh, channel is lit. That's right, Stack. You're right. You're right, baby. Yes! yes! What's life? I don't know, John Guy. I've, I've been trying to figure that out. I can't. I can't really put my finger on it. I still haven't, <laughs> I haven't solved that riddle. What is life? What is life? All right, I'm gonna open some phone lines. I miss your voices. I miss your phone calls. So here, use our Discord. There's a link in the description. We'll take patrons first, of course, and then we'll roll into our regular Discord. Now, if you are a patron, let me just say this. If you are a patron, if you're calling, keep calling. Keep calling up, and we will definitely take your call. But if you are a patron and you can't get through, yeah, you don't know how to make the call, just jump in this list over here, call the show, if you're a patron, in the patron Discord, and just put like, wonderful, wonderful. There, here's Sonosi. See, bang. So we're going to take Sonosi's call. Okay. And once we're done with our patrons, we'll roll over into our regular Discord. You could do the same thing. Call up, try to keep calling. And um, if, we, if you can't get through to us, then just slip in that section. I'll check it out. Let us know in the chat too if, if like we missed you or something like that and where you are. Uh, Sonosi, how's it going, bud? The best. I'm the best. What's going on? Oh, uh, wonderful, Ando. First thing, I think the that new dono you should use for three dollars or fourteen dollars. Those are slots you don't have any money on. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna start replacing some. It, it hurts. Oh, you want yeah, it hurts me to do it, but I'm gonna start replacing some that you know I feel like are kind of stale. So I gotta I gotta figure it out which one I I want to swap out. I got a perfect one. Do you guys even use the stink print anymore? Because I don't think that one come up, or the Kobe one rarely comes up. But I feel like with a Kobe card, it's still relevant. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah, stank breath. Yeah, I don't know. I, we haven't used stank breath in a while, so yeah, maybe that might be the one. Anywho, I don't want to discuss too much on the whole um, Habib versus Charles just because I feel it's never going to happen. But I do yeah. want to discuss the thing of Islam versus Charles because I feel you know that's more realistic right now. Okay. Actually, so a couple of things before you get into your point. Do you... Th sure. hmm. it's, it's funny that you said you think that's more realistic because I think they're both ir not realistic. But if you had to pick one that is more likely to happen, I still think Oliveira would be more likely than Islam because Islam is the protege. Like, I don't I don't know. I don't think Khabib would. I mean, he didn't fight Kane. Why would he fight Islam, you know? No, that's a good point. No, no, but I'm just saying Charles. I'm just talking about, talking about Charles versus Islam is, is going to eventually happen. I'm just meaning that Khabib versus Charles is going to happen. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. That, so basically, both Islam. both fights would are never going to happen. But okay. So tell yeah. me about uh, Islam. What do you think if that did happen? I think it's gonna be an interesting fight. You know, one thing I um, and this even go back to Habib a little bit. Though I think the most interesting aspect might be what happens we, if we get a Kobe Usman scenario of weapons they just cancel each other out. Mm hmm. What happens there? I would actually be curious as how that'd go because, like you said, Islam, unlike Habib, is a, is an okay striker. I would like to see what would happen, who would actually dominate in that field. But the most important thing being that we haven't seen submission artist types like Charles go against um, Sambo fighters. So we really don't know what, was, what would happen 100%. We have an idea what will happen, but we haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, we have, and other than that whole KO scenario from Islam, we haven't seen him go through much diversity. I mean, that's the one thing I'll give Charles credit versus anybody he has struggled most of his career so unlike most he he can put on the gas pedal he can grit his teeth and he can survive i think that's his most um his strongest attribute actually more than anything else yeah i think losses are important when we have randy brown on he kind of you know piggybacked off of that he's basically you do you learn from your losses here and i think charles Oliveira needed those l's to become the champion that he is today so that that does aid him in some sort of way. Um, I don't know. I just, I just, I just don't. 
as much as I want to make the argument of Oliveira winning that fight, I just, it, it just, it's, it's so tricky. I, I just can't, you know, I want to, but I, I can't, I just feel like. Okay. I understand Habib, but what about Islam? Do you honestly think Islam will completely defeat Charles? Cause I don't, I think that can, it can go either way for many reasons. I don't think it's no lock in. Um, so Islam, I think you can make more of an argument for Oliveira because we still need more information to assess with Islam. But still, at this stage of the game, I think Islam could still get it done. I think Islam over Charles is a very good possibility. There's a reason why he's a favorite. You know, I think a, a lot of us understand how good Islam really is. So I would probably still lean in Islam's direction. Well, oh, I can't for the moment just because I I haven't seen him go against tough tough enough competition yet to convince me otherwise. I mean, Habib at least near the end of his career was showing that he was getting to that point. Islam mm -hmm. hasn't gotten there yet. I mean, he's based if he gets to a title shot, it's because he beat Bobby Green. No offense. Yeah, well, I'm I'm going off of you know gym conversations and what people like the mystique yeah. of Islam and and people saying how strong he is. Some people are saying he's a you know he's a better he's like Habib with better striking, you know like I, I'm trying to go by that stuff. And not only does he have the skill set, but he has Habib in his corner. I think that's a that's another massive added value. Having a guy like Habib in your corner, he has proven to be a very good coach. That is true. The you know, one thing I will be very curious about, what happens if Charles submits him, especially if it's like one of those low percentage submissions, like a standing, like, you know, like triangle, some kind of weird shit, or just something we don't usually see often, especially against a Sambo guy. Because, like, you, you made a good point about one thing. MMA with Sambo, we don't see many of them getting defeated by jujitsu people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you mean... Do that changes them? I, 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 the, the, everybody, because, you know, everyone's kind of sees right now Combat um, MMA Sambo in the UFC you knows mainstream. They're looking at that like how people saw Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for the old UFC age. I think the argument of Jiu Jitsu versus wrestling is very fascinating. But when you put Jiu Jitsu versus Sambo, I think when it comes to the UFC, I mean, I think Sambo is far superior. I really do. It just, it feels like that is like, that's like a cheat code to champions. It is, though. We don't have the funny thing is, we don't have many people for it right now as champions yet. I mean, granted, in other organizations do, but in the UFC, we only have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, know, in time, we're going to have Sambo versus Sambo. It's, 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 it's inevitable. You know, like there are going to be these athletes that are going to be coming in here saying, hey, this shit works. You know? I mean, when was the last? I mean, the last person we had judo was Ronda. We haven't had a, a judo does not connect take down. Same with karate. You just know certain ones like you need a very special individual who usually has to blend in other things. You can't just do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no. Um, I just want to bring up one last point. Real quick. You mentioned the whole argument of things that change if you had to do MMA. I think the two most effective ones. The first one being. We just need, a, like you said, the knees and stuff. We just got to get rid of it. I think that people use it too much as a crutch. So, so you're saying a grounded opponent knee thing? Is that what you're saying? Yes. I know it doesn't look nice on paper, but let's be honest. How much of a difference does it become when you can't use that little defense, that little leeway or flaw, whatever you want to call it, to defend yourself from being taken? I mean, hell, say what you will about Pride Championship. The fact that you could do things like head stomps and stuff like that made it where grappling was harder. But if you could pull it off, you guys still kick their ass. But you couldn't do some of these um, things that just to defend against it. I, I think needing a grounded opponent, we need to completely allow. Allow it because fighters will stop doing it on purpose. You know, they will. They're, I mean, it's just – it's it's – I don't know. It's just weird, man. Seeing guys like they're in a position where they can, you know, just manipulate themselves to say, you know, I'm a little tired or something like that. I'll take these strike. I'll take these strikes in other places. I just don't want to get hit in the head. Let me just put my foot, my hand down. Like, <laughs> like it's kind of weird. You're seeing athletes take advantage of that. I'd, I'd rather see them say, okay, I don't want to be in this position. I need to avoid it at all costs. I don't want to get kneed in the head, so I'm going to try another approach to get the fuck out of this position rather than say, ah, I'm exhausted. I'll take hits to the stomach and the, the legs. I just don't want to get hit in the head. You know? So, yeah. Let's, let's, let's do away with that, you know? 
Demetrius Johnson was the we got to see that air for everyone else got to see it on live television. What happens when you allow knees? <laughs> Mighty yeah. Mouse got taken out by it. Yeah, I mean it was it was funny. That was so rough to watch coming from watching so much UFC, right? But when you think about it, it makes sense. Like that that makes like that should if you can elbow someone in the fucking face, like <laughs> like that's vicious. It's vicious way. If you could fucking take your shin and and club someone on the side of the head with that thing, that's fucking nasty. You could do that. If you could do an oblique kick and just bust out someone's fucking knee or something with with a chopping kick. If you could do that stuff, I don't understand. Like everything then either get rid of everything or keep everything. I don't I don't get it, you know? Exactly. And now, the last thing I would say just to add or to add to I may the sudden death round. It would just it would solve some of these issues with these decision fights. I mean, yeah, you can just win another round afterwards. But okay, now the fight wasn't resolved. Okay, one round determines everything. I know that kind of almost defeats the purpose of you know the scoring system, but it would change things if one round was how everything got graded. It would almost be like how you grade a whole fight based on that one round. It would be very controversial because when like the NHL brought into the shootout in the regular season, it turned into a skills competition deciding, like, it's like the game meant nothing, and then everything's on a skills competition, which, you know, it made more scoring, it made it exciting for casual fans, but the hardcores are like, well, basically the fight was a waste then. I mean, the uh, the game was a waste. And I feel like if there was sudden death, it, it might feel the same way in some sort of situation. So here's the thing. So you're trying to eliminate decisions, Maybe for champ, maybe hmm, let me think of this way. If it's a close fight, maybe that's more of a fair statement. If we change it where we have those close ones, especially for championship fights or any main event five rounder, it's like, okay, we can see it's going to be a split decision or it's coming close to that. Let's just have this other round decided there. I said, so I, 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 fair. I say just steal from the PFL. PFL, like you, you win early in the fight. You get more points, right? And, and and it helps you moving on in your tournament. What the UFC could do is, you win in the first round, you get paid more. You win the second round, you get paid a little bit more. You win in the third round, you get paid a little bit, a little bit more. If you do a decision, you make the least. You know, like, and if you lose that decision, you make, you know, the bottom amount that you could possibly mm-hmm. make. I think that's the okay. way. I actually like that. Oh, that or the flagging system pride. Either of those works. But yeah, money affecting money overall does change things. Yeah, because All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. Okay, be good, Sanosi. That I mean, I think that's. I think it's a no-brainer. I don't understand why the UFC doesn't do that. You know what, guy? I mean, you're gonna see. You're gonna make it more exciting because guys could be looking for first-round finishes. You know, um, even if it goes to a third round and you're up to zip going into the. Th- if you made open scoring, but you got paid more first, second, third round, like, so say you make the least in the third round, you make a little more in the second round, you make the most in the first round finish, a decision you make least overall. Like, I think fighters would be more prone to say, okay, I'm up to zip, but I could use that extra couple of bucks in my bank account. I think that's the way. You could have open scoring. A fighter could be up to zip and be like, hey, I got to get the extra money here. I got I to gotta put the pedal to the metal. They'll take more chances. The problems are solved. That's it. I mean, I I think it's 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 not brain surgery. How you doing, Ellie? Ellie, Jesse, I'm I'm doing this a lot. What is going on? I don't know. Every I don't I have no idea. Day for the last like three days, he's been calling me Ellie and the, Ellie Jesse. The na- like, it's I, so I told her today we should have never used to do it that much. We should have just named Ellie Jesse. <laughs> it's not even we, close to the same. We can still switch. It's not even the same name. I get confused. I call you Jenny. Remember when when I'm with Jenny? Yeah, like but you Jesse just started doing this Ellie Jesse thing. You never since she was born, I, you haven't done it this this much. Here's the problem. I am I'm always trying to think like two or three steps ahead. Like I'll I'll ask you a question, but I'm thinking of like a topic or something, of especially Ellie? on the show. <laughs> it's it's wild. Like I'm constant I'm thinking too much. It's yeah. it's nauseating. <laughs> so Ellie Earlier today, <laughs> he was talking to Ellie about the, the Rangers game. And he was like, look, they got to get into the goal, Jesse. And I was like, Jesse. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm old. I mean, I'm old. What do you want me to do? It's an old brain. Oh it's a God. fried up brain. And now it's, I'm old and in the sun. So it makes it even worse. I'm like a raisin. Uh, okay. I want to show you this uh, footage. Uh, we got some phone calls I want to take as well. Uh, let me see what patrons just make sure. Okay. 
Uh, so we'll jump into the regular Discord. A couple of things. I feel like we've solved the problem here with with making things more entertaining, with what? Uh, judging, exposing judging a little bit. We can have open scoring. Okay. The key to op open scoring is have, if a fighter gets a knockout in the first round, they make the most money. They get a knockout in the second round, the uh, second most money. If they make a knockout in the third round, a little Compared less. Compared to what? Yeah, so say say you get a knockout in the first round, you get 50K. Knockout in the second round, you're getting, I don't know, 35,000. Knockout in the uh, uh, third round, you're getting, I don't know, 20K or something like that, right? And okay. if you get a decision, you get whatever. I don't, whatever you're, you know, is in your contract, okay? So now, if you're doing open scoring, and you have a fighter that's up two to zip, if they coast it out, they're going to make the minimum. So they're going to, even though they know they're winning, they're going to probably try to go for a finish in that third round to get a couple extra bucks. Right. No more bonuses. Get rid of the bonus. I don't know if that justifies open scoring. Well, it does. Because if you think about it, a fighter, the problem with open scoring is if a fighter is up two zip, why even try the third round? Just run around. You know what I'm saying? Just run away. And you win. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Encourages them to make a more exciting fight. Yeah, if you, if you get a finish, you get, a, you get extra money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I think that fixes it. I'm into it. I'm not a big fan of open scoring. We need something to give the fighters some sort of incentive. So I think that works. I like it. You know? What do you think in the chat? And uh, I do want to show um well, what's your idea? I'll show Jesse the footage of Habib and Luke Rockhold. I see it. Uh Khabib banded. 36 strike. I, what language are you speaking then? Uh, Jesse, the gluten is affecting Moss's thought process. Yeah, Moss did have a, a, quite a bit of gluten today. I did, yeah. I've been really off the gluten. I mean... Uh, on the gluten. On the gluten. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's too much gluten in my body. Uh, I don't like open scoring. So sober Carl, Nabra, Habib, win. Go watch it again. Says D-Man. Drunk says, Sean, call in tonight and see if you can get JBM to laugh at your accent again. When did I ever laugh at his accent? I don't know. I like that idea a lot, actually, says Dustin Diamond. MMA says, yeah, yeah, good one, dude. Uh, maybe tell me how I'm wrong. Keep I think he's just arguing with another person oh, in the okay. chat. Oh, okay, so don't read this guy? Yeah. Like, right. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, I'll call in, in on my ideas. So we're Carl, all right. Okay, yeah, call in. But the chat's like, what are you guys, you guys full of sleep? What happened here? You guys are like... It's Memorial Day, Moss. You got 150 some odd people in here, and people are like, I don't know. I don't want to say anything. All right, go to this video over here. We showed it a couple of times. Habib is training with Luke Rockhold. Now, this is training. I'll let you hear what he's saying. Oh, what the fuck? Brother, I miss you. I hug you. What do you say, Jess? I miss you. I hug you. Brother, I miss you. I hug you. I like this hug. And then Luke Rockhold goes, I like this hug. <laughs> okay, so there. He goes, This is good. So there's Habib. Hugging Luke Rockhold. Man's a middleweight. You know, he fought at light heavy as well. He's Brother, a big I fucking miss guy. you. I hug you. <laughs> and he can't budge from the mat. I mean, I always thought Luke Rockhold was way overhyped, in fairness. What? Yeah. You do know he's a fantastic grappler, right? I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I cannot stand Luke Rockhold. I don't give a shit if you can't stand him. I'm saying you know he's... The guy's a fucking strike force no, champion. No, I think he's way overhyped. You don't remember what he's done, right? Sure I do. Way He was also a UFC champion. Way overhyped. He was a strike force champ at UFC. He's overhyped? Way overhyped. Listen, I hate I hate Luke Rockle. Don't get me wrong. I, I can't stand the guy, but let's pump the brakes here. Overhyped? Overhyped. So so overhyped that he has a lightweight holding him down on the ground. That's nothing? That's a that's a goat lightweight right there. Yeah. Well, we know that. Okay. All right. I'm I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna entertain this conversation. Let's take some phone calls. Uh, let's see. We gotta get Tropic in over here. All right, Tropic, you there? Uh, let's see. We get Tropic in over here. Tropic. Yo, can you hear me? Yes. What's going on, man? All right, let me get you off speaker. It'll be clear anyway. Oh man, I haven't called in in a while. Yeah. What's listen? So you're uh, you want to explain the hat situation, Jess? Oh yes, we. So the we go through a third party for our uh, merchandise. So basically, there was like a contrast issue with the colors, and they couldn't send it out. So and and usually they reach out to us about these things, but we didn't get an email. So I had to go into the account and see what was going on. So a new one is being sent to you. Don't worry, 
it was you and two other people who had this issue. Yeah, Kendall, if you're so, in the chat. Yeah, Kendall and someone else. I can't remember the name. I thought it was that kid, but apparently it was someone else. But um, don't worry, guys. Your stuff is coming out. There we go. A contrast issue? What's that? Yeah. So I'm getting a pink hat now or what? <laughs> no. So apparently, like, if you choose a specific color for your product... <laughs> And it, like, I guess doesn't work with the colors on the logo or whatever the fuck it is. They can't print it. So usually they uh, send an email and they're like, hey, can't print this. You know, choose what you want to do. But they didn't send an email this time for all three of you guys. So I had to, I, if you didn't say anything, I would have never known. Was Drunk Drunk the other one then? I got it. I, I thought mm -hmm. maybe it was going to be a matching problem with my handbag and my pumps. And that, that would have been, that would have been bad. What? Just let him free, Jess. It's a, let him. It's, a, it's a joke about ladies always having to match their shit. Come on, lady. Oh, gotcha. Anyways. Well, in fairness, I'm not like a typical woman. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, you're not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm really, I haven't called in in a while. I'm really, I was kind of bummed because I didn't see Casey Jones in the chat, but I just saw him pop up there a little bit ago. I know he hates it when casuals call in. He starts getting itchy. Mm -hmm. And telling people to get off the line. So normally I am pretty quick, but I'm feeling pretty comfy one for you right now. Even though he never calls in Casey Jones. All the nerve to tell everyone yeah. else to hang up. Yeah, you don't call in Casey. Wait, was Roberto the other guy? He said he didn't get his uh, water bottle. Was he the guy? I don't know. Yeah, there was a third exactly. guy. I just saw it in the chat. He says he didn't Roberto. get his bottle. But... Okay, so it's got to be him. Wait, you didn't get your bottle? Well, who was on the list? There was a third guy. I didn't recognize the name. So what happened? Did you reorder it? Yeah, all three. Kendall, Tropic, and that, whoever that third guy was. Oh, so it's got to be Roberto then. No, I, I would recognize if it was Roberto. So wait, Roberto, you didn't get your bottle. Shoot in the DMs. Let us know all the details if there's issues. Please DM me, Roberto. It's, it's this, this fucking company that we're holes working on with. Discord. If you did not receive your merchandise. Oh, Casey Jones is so sweet. Look at him blowing me a kiss. Anyways, the... Uh, did I get cut off? No. <laughs> Oh, okay. I saw your mouth move and I didn't hear you saying anything. It's like, you're my cut or something. Yeah. So let's talk about this interview coming up. I'm going to be sorely disappointed if you don't ask the female MMA chick how big her hog is, bro. <laughs> Equal oh, opportunity, Taylor man. <laughs> you want to you know how big her cock is? Why don't we call her, Trop her again hog, and yeah. then have him ask? You got you to gotta ask. You ask all the male fighters, man. You got to ask the chick how big her hog is. That would be funny if we took phone calls to talk to her. That would be really funny. That's probably not. That's probably not wise. Yeah, I would we do used that. to. So back in the day, we used to do that. I I feel like we should bring it back for her. I don't I, know if this is a smart idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun with her. I'm gonna like really see how far well, we can I push it. Well, I figured you probably would. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try. We're gonna get the audience riled up. We're gonna have a good yeah. time. Maybe we'll get her naked and shit. You think she'll strip for us? Yeah, I'm not gonna watch that show. We're gonna see her. You guys want to see her panties and stuff? Like, you think Taylor? My show? God. <laughs> You, you are you are seriously a big time Howard fan, aren't you? <laughs> Let's get her on the Sibian. We need a Sibian. Yeah. Hey Jess, if Moss tells you he needs to order a Sibian, then then you know you're 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 heading for trouble. Well, he would receive the Sibian and some divorce papers. Oh That's come on! Sure. You wouldn't let you wouldn't let. Oh, it. Man. oh no! I just said. You don't know until you try it. Yeah. You gotta ride it. Yeah. Before you make those kind of decisions. Come on now. You wouldn't let girls jump on a Sibian? Uh, I just won't watch the show. Come on! You would not stop it. It's not like if we're I, fucking her. If I were asking guys to do this kind of shit, Larry, Moss, I, how would you feel? I would be cool with it. You're so full of shit. If if a guy if a guy came Listen, on the show, whatever you want to do, I'm just not gonna watch. Let it. me just say say this: if we had a fighter come on the show, I'm like, yo, just beat up for us right now, and they start beating off, I think it'd be hilarious. No, you. I would laugh my ass if, off. If if I were conducting the interview <laughs> alone without you here, <laughs> yeah, I don't. You would not hey, be okay got, with it. Who cares? We got two joints to piss on live stream. Yeah, I don't that's close. Fuck. Moss is sitting right next to me. So if I were conducting this interview alone without Moss there, I, I know for a fact, regardless, I just won't watch. It doesn't matter. Actually, beat off would be, it, that's not the same as a Sibian. If, if we had a guy, let's see, I don't know, put a flashlight on or some shit like that. <laughs> if we had like Habib on the show, mm -hmm. and we're like, Habib, we have a flashlight never used in the package. You, would you use this? Would you be upset if we had him use it? I don't know why you're putting me in this position. I didn't ask for this. I'm All just right. not going to watch the show. Okay. If you're, if you're going to get like stupid... With her like and stuff a like a flesh. Oh God, Jesse! I'm Come just, on! I don't care what you do. I just don't want to watch it, so I don't know. Did you not like when I used to interview girls back in the day? Well, back in the day, you? we weren't like an item. So no, I'm didn't... saying like the yeah, the questions that I asked. 
No, it did. to me it was funny because we weren't an item. That's why I said I'm not going to stop you because I get it. It's funny to people, so I'm not going to stop you from delivering content. I'm just not going to watch it. Like I, I think that's fair. I feel like we're making Private Parts Part Two like live. Like we're actually making that movie right now. Okay. Remember when that was, would be your dream. Oh, that'd be amazing. A feature film about the MMA holes. What do you think, Jess? Uh, <laughs> this is the part so of the movie. So you can see all the behind the scenes <laughs> arguing that happens every day. When Jess is in the. She just shuts up. Is it up. a romance? A, a horror <laughs> flick? A, yeah, I think it'd be comedy? more along the lines of a horror. <laughs> well, the problem with Fuck private parts be. is they glorified their marriage, and then in real life, they got divorced. So it's yeah, like. Yeah, I wouldn't was... glorify. If we did a movie. <laughs> I would not glorify that shit. I would be, you. I would give the real deal. <laughs> What's going on? We need a Sibian. All right. Anyway, yeah. we'll move on before. Well, anyway, back to an MMA topic, real quick. The yeah. open scoring, because I'm I'm casual, so I'll give my two cents. I I don't think it would hurt to try. And yeah. I saw a couple of people commenting that it ruins the the reveal at the end, but you just don't show the open scorecard for the final round, mm -hmm. and then you can still maintain the suspense, right? Absolutely. And then the whole idea of some guy running around, running away in the third round. Yeah, they could try, but you got two fucking killers in there. If some guy's trying to run away from your ass, don't you think the other guy can get after it? And then if you are the pussy that's running away to preserve your two-round lead, how do you think that's going to play out with the fans? You They're know, just going to look at you like you're a big piece of shit. You know what you could do? Like, in that third round, like, you can tell the ref... Listen, if a guy is just flat out running and not competing, it, you give him a couple of warnings. If he keeps running, you take a point. Like, it's almost like like if you hold a fighter down, right? You're holding him down, holding him down, you're not doing anything. You should take a point there if you're not do if you're not advancing or doing anything. If you're warning them and they're not doing nothing, take a point for there. If you're running around and not fighting, like everyone's there to see a fight, you take a point too maybe. Maybe that would encourage you if you don't want to do the pay thing. I, I think it would work itself out because if you're, if you're going to be a runner like that, I mean, there's, there's legit fights with the scoring system now. Like uh, Izzy and... Uh, fucking what Romero mm -hmm. that was a disaster yeah it was right yeah they and, should have been warned you know do you think the management was happy with that shit do you think the fans were happy with that shit do you think either one of them now they got their paychecks but think either one of them men went home thinking they were men yeah I mean they they well Izzy especially is just defending it and this and that you see him on Twitter saying stuff about it he's just gonna go to the grave defending what he did there but I mean I understand what he did but at the same time it's not fun to watch yeah, I don't think that it would – if you set it up and people started doing that runaway horse shit, I don't think it would last. I, I think they would they would clear itself up. The fighters would, would you know, man up or they'd make an adjustment or something. Hmm. So they could give it a shot, give the open scoring a shot. Why not? You know, it's funny that you said think they were men. I saw someone in the chat say think they were men with a laughing emoji. Are you making a joke about Izzy's tit? No, no, no. I wouldn't. Okay. Oh, you mean the, you're asking the guy in <laughs> the chat? No, you. I'm asking. I'm asking you, Tropic. Oh, me? No, yeah. no, no. I'm just. I'm just saying the whole. Okay. When we watch that, you know, we want to see people bang or at least wrestle or something. But mm -hmm. when you just stand there and look at each other and and kind of do nothing, nobody wants to see that shit. And they're, yeah, they're real men for getting in the cage. They'll kick my ass any day of the week. Most people's ass any day of the week. But at the same time, it's an entertainment product. You can't go in there and then think the fans are going to be cool with that. Mm -hmm. You went in there and we're just a big letdown. Absolutely. Absolutely. Moss, when you listen to Tropic Tom, do you ever think of Chris from Howard's show? Chris who? The gay Say that guy. one more time. <laughs> what? Not not like the whole homosexual part. I'm saying like like the intelli like the logical, like the intelligence and stuff like that, and then coming with content. Wait, like, what gay guy named Chris? I don't even know. Chris, uh, whatever the fuck his name is. I'm not saying Tropic's gay. I'm saying like... Wait, are you saying I'm gay? No, 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 no. <laughs> I... <laughs> I knew that it was going to go there, so I'm trying to, like, <laughs> like cover. No, I don't think, I'm not saying, like, the whole gay thing. I'm saying he came, he's, like, the really intellectual guy. The, like. I don't know. Which guy is that? The, so you're saying I'm a, a smart gay guy? <laughs> <laughs> She's saying she wants you on the Sibian. The one, no, he, like, brings really good content. He was the one who was, like, flirting with Eric, Eric, high pitch Eric. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you yeah. think the Sibian can be turned up enough to hit the prostate? <laughs> Try, I just like how knew much it was money? gonna go there. So I'm trying. Like I don't mean the whole gay thing. I just mean like you know. All joking aside, if there were a Sibian, say if you were in the MMA whole studio, we had a, a Sibian over here, and like, listen, for X amount of dollars, all you gotta do is ride this vibrating thing. What would be the price? For Tropic. Unfortunately for me, yeah. I'm not a. I'm not really motivated by money, and I am no. gonna have to face a classroom of students in the future. So <laughs> you have to ride it backwards. I don't think it'd be a good idea for what me you, to. Uh, 
Tom, what are ride you gonna the, do? Ride the Sibian pony. What are you gonna do when you get your, you know, certification and your degree and stuff like that? You become a teacher. Are you still gonna, uh, you know, like equate yourself with us? Or? Well, he doesn't. It's not like he, it's not like he's giving his full name. Well, yet. that no. What I'm asking is like, eventually, someone's gonna figure out that you're that you're in some way like. Is he the only? Are you the well, only they, Tom and Guam? They, intertwined. Yeah. No, they could, but uh, normally, like we got a cancel culture now, right? Yeah. So it's a it's a hazard. However, uh, the island is shorthanded like 300 teachers every single year. So hmm. as long so, as I don't do something where I'm doing bad things to kids or yeah. doing doing a felony, I can do whatever I want in my personal Fuck life yeah, as, not, as long as it's not illegal and I don't bring it into the classroom. So you we just keep those cool? things separated. That's all. Tom, would you be would you be like oh so then would you be opposed to like doing like video content like if you were an actual character on the show? Video content as a character on the show? Yeah, like no, like puppets? no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying not like a character, but like you know, like Tropic Tom, like Tropic Tom is your name. You know, you come on the show and but like on video and you he already is a character. Oh, I see. You mean he like. Uh, like Beetlejuice on uh, <laughs> Howard's show. Yeah. No, Part of the unlike whack pack. I put on some uh, let me, glasses. Uh, and so think about it like Sal. Be the smart gay guy. No, yeah. no, think about it like Sal Governale or however you pronounce his last name. Sal, he was a fan, and then he, he also shoves things up his ass. Okay, I'm not saying Tropic Tom's does, gonna does, shove does, shit up his ass. I'm saying John. Oh God, <laughs> I'm not like a whack packer. I'm saying like an so you want to abuse Tropic Tom? You're saying no. I'm saying like oh, an okay. actual fucking. I think he brings good content, and he's you know very very intellectual, and I think he could bring value as a. I know I'm saying character, but I'm value. saying a person on the show. What do you want me to say? Like he's on the show right now. He's bringing value. No, I'm saying a video. That's people right. like to watch things, Moss. What would you like to see Tropic Tom do? No, I'm saying if you just had him like his right, head, a, a floating head, have him sit in front of a green screen, have a floating head in the show <laughs> during certain parts. So put him in a uh, green screen no, outfit. You, yeah. I, no, I can't. I've got like a five head. I've got a crazy big dome. Put a wig and it'll on. just fucking eat up the real estate. We can't do that. Well, now I really like this. Now I, I like know. this she's, idea. I know she's telling me to abort, so I, I got to cut this off <laughs> All after right. I give other people a chance. All right, Tom. Hope you uh, guys had a good laugh, though. And oh, shout out again to Kendall, the, the shout out queen. Yeah. For giving me that shout out from Marcus Brimage. And then she also got our channel a shout out, I think, from Herb Dean oh, a few nice. weeks back. Yeah, so, that's right. true. She's she's the queen of the shout out. Y'all have a good one. Thanks for the show. Wonderful, right. wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, nice Tropic, Tropic Tom. Tom. Wonderful, wonderful. So, I don't know why you're shitting on me, Moss. I'm thinking of growth, and I'm thinking of where the show can CBD. go. CBD. And, of course, you cut me off on CBD, purpose. CBD, that was nice. CBD, 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 CBD. Get your CBD out. CBD, CBD. It helps with... Uh healing process and uh, inflammation and stuff like that. So you wanted to get these for before or after the fire training and make your life a better place. All right. Roberto. I think it's Javier Mendez sharing this for publicity and attention pretty much. Good friends from the gym both out for years. Yeah. I mean, like this video over here, clearly the way, you know, it's just Habib highlights. <laughs> it's chopped up a little bit. So, yeah, it's it's someone trying to say, hey, look, the lightweight goat put some respect on his name. He's holding down fucking Luke Rockhold, for God's sakes, making it look easy. What do you think, Jess? Mm -hmm. It says credit Luke Rockhold on the bottom of this. So did Luke post this? Well, see where it says from UFC on BT Sport underneath? So is so so just no. All, All right. right. That's what I'm doing. I was just going to tell you to move the video, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, it says from UFC on BT Sport. So whenever you copy a link to a video, it'll... Um, credit the original poster. Yeah, but I don't. So, I don't know if BT was there. That's here what we I'm go. saying. So BT. No, Luke Rockhold, Jess. It's Luke. Luke posted it. So Luke posted it. You just gotta like follow the trail. Yeah, Luke posted it. So if Luke is the one posting this thing, wait, where is it though? It's a bunch of shirtless pictures. Where? When did he post this? You could go to like tweets and replies and see if it's in there. Uh, Team Khabib Squeeze, brother, I miss your hug. Khabib's a different breed, Luke Rockhold. Did he put it, maybe put it on his Instagram? Let's see. Yeah, because they're crediting just Luke. So I'm assuming they got it from him. Here we go. Every time I see, the, like, these guys at the gym, all I think is it's got to, like, when we have Will Harris on, I was like, it's got to stink in these gyms, right? Well, they say it does. It's got to smell terrible. They say even the women stink. Oh, there it is. 
Don't get too comfortable, Kadir. Don't get too comfortable. No. Don't get too comfortable. Shut up. Humble, humble, humble. Brother, I just miss you. I hug you, bro. <laughs> brother, I miss you. I hug you. <laughs> I love you, son. I love you. He gets really tight. See, he says he gets really tight. He says he gets really tight, you know, like, I mean, he's... Well, look at his hands underneath Luke's back. They're completely locked in. Like, he's so guys, probably just squeezing. Luke Rockhold posted this. So so a lot of people thinking that, you know, it, this is a you know a stunt, you know, trying to keep, you know, put some respect on Habib's name. Well, I mean, Luke posted it. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. It's wild to have that much dominance, that much control. That's the eagle for you. <laughs> All of a sudden, Luke practice. Luke practice. Luke practice. It ain't over yet. Coach, it's not over yet. I mean, he's he's the best. He's the best crotch sniffer, sniffer in the game, Jess. The best. There's no crotch sniffer better than that. Thank you. Uh, Straw Ludlow has just become a Fookin member. What? Come on, Straw. By the way, completely irrelevant, Moss. I just thought of it when we did the applause. Well, be before you say it, we're eight away. We're eight away. To the chicken nugget. Eight members away. Okay, good. Take us away. Ellie knows how to clap now. <laughs> so if you ever do that applause during Fight Buddy, she'll be clapping with us. Oh, super chat. We'll get back to the phone calls after this. Like beats Paolo somehow, right? Or am I nuts? Luke beats Paolo? Okay. No way. All right, who wins the fight of Luke versus... Paolo Costa. Do not... Use that footage and say, oh, Powell's going to kick his ass. Paul Do not Costa. think that. Who Paul wins? Costa. Here's the problem. Luke's been out for so long. Look at what Romero. Paula Costa. Paula Costa beats Luke Rockhold. Okay. In the Yolo Romero fight with Luke, Luke was winning. He got clipped. And Paula his head Costa beats Luke Rockhold. Got fucking hit to the rafters. So he did get cracked. Also, remember this. Luke Rockhold versus Yolo Romero. Romero missed weight in that fight. Luke shouldn't have never taken Romero it. always misses weight. He missed weight in that fight. Luke should... If Luke never took that fight, everything would have been different for Rockhold. Depends. Is he drinking wine before the fight? <laughs> and Paulo could be drinking wine. It's true. Uh, Paulo goes to beats Luke Rockhold. This is a bad fight for Luke to take because chances are Paulo's going to miss weight. Luke's going to be stuck. <laughs> He's... Um, I think if it's if Paulo hits the weight and this is Luke, he was kind of active, I think Luke wins. Easy. I disagree. But we we don't know because Rockhold has been out of the game for a while. When was the last time Rockhold fought? It's been what, three years, four years? I don't even know. <laughs> it's such a good joke. I don't know why I don't say the jokes that I have, Ma. Just say it. What do you? And then when I do say a joke, it doesn't land. But just the ones that I know I have, like they, I know they would land, and I just don't say them. I don't because I don't want to come across as an asshole. Just say it. Uh, Rockhold fought 2019. Uh, let's see. July 6th. And that was the Jan Blachowicz fight. So 2019. Almost three years ago. <laughs> yeah, last fight was Jan. Thank you, Straw. Hey, big thanks to the th donators tonight. You guys are fucking savages. Thank you! Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. What's the joke? Say it before we open uh, the phone lines. It's all right. It's too late now. It would have landed when I said it. Just say it. Why, yeah. like, why are you even hesitating? I hesitate because I, unlike you, Moss, I care about how I come across to people. You clearly don't. What are you talking what, about? What does that mean? You just say whatever's on your mind. What are you talking about? No, I'm brutally honest with people. But if I'm making a joke, it's different because sometimes jokes go too far. You know, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Uh, Pulse. Pulse, have I ever hurt your feelings? Hello. Hi, Pulse. Hey, Pulse. How you doing, buddy? Oh, uh, wonderful, wonderful. Nice. Wonderful, wonderful. Jesse wants to know if she's ever hurt your feelings. Has she ever hurt my feelings? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Not that I can recall. Oh, that's good. See, you know why? Because I don't tell the jokes <laughs> when they come to my head. Pulse, when, is, when was the last time your feelings were hurt? Just in life. Oh, uh, I shoot. I don't know. Probably this morning. This What happened? Oh, man, you want a specific instance? Yeah, yeah. tell me. Like, what, what made your hurt, uh, feelings hurt? My feelings been hurt a couple of times in life. It sucks. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of bullshit. I don't really have a... a, a I don't really have a story. <laughs> have you ever had a... Tell us a real story of when your feelings have been hurt. Yeah, are you in a relationship? Like, what's the deal? Are you single? Do you have a girlfriend, wife? What's going on? We don't know what's going are on. Are you gay? You, yeah, you... Like, guys? No. Okay. No. Okay. So you're not in a relationship? No, I can't say I'm in a relationship at the moment, no. Okay. Are you just, like, sl like slinging dick? Like, what's going on? <laughs> uh... There's, I don't really know what you would call the nature of our association. We're kind of just chilling right now. Oh, so there is a lady, lady a lovely lady. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's great. How old is she? <laughs> 28. 28? Okay. Woo! And how old are you, Pulse? Jesus, I feel like I'm being interrogated. <laughs> how old are you, Pulse? <laughs> I'm 12. <laughs> oh, Talk. Pulse. Oh, Pulsinator. She's 28. That's a good age. Okay. Is she, she, is she, what is, uh, I mean, what's a good question? No, is she friends with benefits? Oh, yeah. Well, we know that. No, we don't. Yeah. He's just slinging dick right no, now. No, uh, we don't know. He said Let he him, can't say he's in a relationship. Why are you answering for him? Can I he mean, answer? it's pretty obvious. So, uh, is she friends with benefits with you right now? I'm glad she doesn't watch this show. Really? Why? <laughs> are you uh, trying to be no, more no, than no. friends with benefits? I don't, I, I mean, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Okay, wait, so we don't have the answer here. So she's not friends with benefits. He's trying to be more than friends with benefits with her. So they're just friends with benefits. Okay. Yeah, so so how, but he wants more. Okay, let me navigate this real quick. How did you guys meet? Uh, On Periscope. Really? Periscope? That's interesting. Is that even around? Yeah, yeah you, I found no, you no, on no. Periscope. So that was a while ago then. Yeah, yeah, about a year and a half. Okay. So you met her on Periscope. So she was what, she, she was doing a live stream? Yeah. Okay, she's doing a live stream. You're in the chat. And how do you slide into the DMs? Uh, well, you know, we just started to converse on that app. And, you know, somebody said they like somebody. Somebody said they like somebody else. And it kind of went from there. Oh, I love it. So you're, you live in what, the same town? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to well, ask that. Okay, so you're in the same town. So this is like a coincidence. You you run into her on Periscope. You didn't know her before this. No, no, no. I I, I found out she was local by checking out her live stream. Okay. Okay, so you already were watching her for a little bit. So she's into guys in wheelchairs, correct? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, have you, so you guys have physically seen each I other now? Yeah, I feel like I should have killed that room a while ago. <laughs> Wait a minute. So it's a miracle. I can walk now. <laughs> oh, it's a miracle. So did you like? Did you have like a special moment with her? And next thing you know, you just like threw the uh, the uh, crutches to you the side, what? and you're like, "It's a miracle." <laughs> no, I want to ask you a question because since we're getting personal now, yeah. How long before Jesse before or when she moved up there? Mm -hmm. How long? How long did y'all know each other before y'all had sex? How long did we know each well, other? Well, we, we were had sex? we were business partners before anything ever happened, relationship wise. Was that we were collaborating? We were business partners. What are you talking about? Well, whatever the fuck you want to call we it. We were just making YouTube collaborating, videos. Collaborating business. She's like, whatever. We were business partners. We no, were we uh, speaking in business terms <laughs> before, so I I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Yeah, what I don't that know time how long. Was. The, yeah, I don't know what the time period was with that. I don't know. Like, I have no idea. A year and a half. Right? Wait, are you, wait. What did you say? After I moved to New York. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. When she she came in and we went we went straight we to were, the. We were fucking when I went when yeah. I moved to New, I moved she, to New York because of Chris. Yeah. As soon as she got to New York, like she didn't even get off the plane. Like she her <laughs> pants were off at the airport. <laughs> That's yeah. That that was after like everything, yeah. you know, unfolded. Were, yeah. Were you not just business partners when you were coming on stream as a hologram? Yeah. So well. 
No, yeah. we had sex then. We No, we didn't. Did Not we? when I was coming on as a hologram. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we didn't. When I was a hologram, that we were still like Bummer. <laughs> we were still like um I don't know, is it business partners or what do you call it? Business associates or collaborator like i don't know what the fuck the word is i don't even know anyways there was not like a relationship and then it went into a relationship shortly thereafter and then i moved to new york and yes we were fucking after i moved to new york you know what making magic (laughs) fishing's right she had bird king before we had sex it's it's actually a true story Uh, actually it's true (laughs) that's how moss got me off of veganism i was a vegan for a long time and moss shoved a burger king burger in front of my face and said you're having this for lunch and I was like, yeah. And I was, you know, head over heels. So I was, I wasn't gonna argue with him. She devoured and that I burger ate it. king. <laughs> and I was no longer a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It was an amazing moment. But back to Pulse. Back to Pulse. Oh, well, I actually had a list of topics that I wanted to talk about. All right. So, so, um, so, all right. So, what's going on? You gonna get date this girl or what? We'll see. We'll see. But. Okay. You wanna uh, you wanna talk about some of these cage fights? Can we help out but one more thing? Can we help out the situation? You're a celebrity on yeah, the show. I, do you think that mm-hmm. like we can move this process along a little quicker? Can you help out? Yeah, we can move it along. Okay. I mean, you are a big figure on this show. You know what I'm saying? So maybe we could we could put something in play where, you know, she gets excited that she, you know, does she know that you're a celebrity? Um no, I don't. I don't. I don't think this is news to me. I'm a celeb. Yeah, you call. I mean, everyone knows who Pulse Reloaded. One's in the chat. If you know who Pulse Reloaded is, I mean, you're you've been around for a while in this community. <laughs> well, actually, you know, cool. That's cool. Maybe what you could do is this. Maybe you can you can make a plea to her. Say, hey, listen, I would love to be in a relationship. <laughs> you clip this. Uh-huh. You send it to her. I mean, we'll, we could have the whole community back you up right now. Buck seventy people could back you up right now, and she could get so soaking wet when she watches this clip. Mm, I don't. That's tempting. It's a tempting offer, but I, right. I don't know. You, Say, I'm you know? Pulse from Pulse's Picks, and I am in love with. I, I, are you in love with this girl or no? Uh. Hmm. Sounds like he is. You know, I really like her. You know, what I'm saying she's great. <gasps> You're in wow. love with her, Pulse. You're smitten. How would she look You're like? You're in she, love with her. She, she's a dime piece or what? She's beautiful to me. Wow. Uh, Oh my god, I've never seen such a soft side of Pulse. Okay, what kind of, what race is she? Is she, uh, what we got here? What, what color is she? So I just wanted to say shout out to Sinochi <laughs> 1K. <laughs> give me, all right, give me her race and then we'll move on. Uh, 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 yeah, I'd rather not. I'd Come rather on. Not. Is she, a, is she a gook or what? What's going on here, Pulse? Is she Asian? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is she Asian? No. Nah. Okay. Is she, uh, black? Uh, no. She's not black. Okay, she white? Mexican? Uh, she's of European descent, yeah. European, okay. Wait, is she from America? No, she says she, <laughs> she lives in... Is she from America? Not originally, no. Wow. But she lives in Texas? Yes. Let's see. Is she um Joanna and Jay? Ch- no. Uh who's who's a female? Is she from like what Germany or is she Irish oh or like God. where is she from? Well, she's yeah. European. That's good. That's fair enough. What do you gotta find like the it doesn't matter. She's European. So. Because the way she sounds. Wow. Was. Imagine poles with a nice sexy European broad. Does she have like a heavy <laughs> accent? <laughs> she's like Beze Pulse. Play with me, poop <laughs> What? Do you have like phone sex with her? So yeah, shout out to Simon. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> oh. Have you sent her a dick pic? Oh my god! I Be love honest. this. No. I no? love soft side of pulse. I love it. I gotta imagine you're packing some serious meat, some serious sausages down there, right? <laughs> I mean, he's like, I'm know. all right. <laughs> yeah, imagine pulse sending the. I mean, you sent us a picture of you holding the gun for God's sakes. You know, at least you could do is send a hog to this broad. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Go ahead. What do you, what do you got? Well, no, I'm, honestly, shout out to Sonosi One K. Uh, you know, he's looked out for us for over the past month and a half. What has it been? Two months? Yeah, man. Sonosi with that One K. I I tell you what, I loved it. I loved the three hour shows. I had a blast doing it. Yeah, but after tonight, in regards to Sonosi One K, he'll just go back to being known as Sonosi. <laughs> <laughs> we just take it away from. <laughs> See you later, Sonosi. 
No, he's still the 1K king unless some other savage comes in for sure. Okay, what was that? Hello? That was the European girl trying to get in. She's trying to <laughs> she's trying to interrupt the call. Is there anything else? Uh yeah, no, I actually had a, a two questions real quick. So earlier you had mentioned Kelvin um or you had mentioned Whitaker versus Usman. Mm -hmm. But I always said that I felt like Gastelum he just he he didn't have have enough discipline to stay at 70 because I feel like right now he would be Usman. Who do you think wins that? Then I got one more. I wish I wish Kelvin could get hit that 170. It was just such a problem. But um who would win? Yeah. I Remember, he's, the, he's I, the same Gastelum who gave Izzy the, the best fight he's ever had. Yeah, I still go Usman. I, I don't know. It's it's I it's just I gotta say Usman. Okay, okay. And then secondly who do you think has more testosterone of these two fighters? Amanda Nunez or Jordan Levin? <laughs> Amanda. I think Jordan would even admit to that. Where would you think? Right. Yeah, I would go Amanda. We're both a team. I heard uh, Amanda Nunez was saying that she thought that Juliana Pena was going to have more smack talk on The Ultimate Fighter. Have you been watching The Ultimate Fighter? No, I haven't been checking it out. I, 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 I've been missing it. Is it good? No, I haven't watched it either. <laughs> Right, so I'm asking you. Why were you asking about it? Because she she was quoted by saying that, which like that's like the last thing you want to hear if you're not watching the show. Yeah. And one of the you know one of the the coaches are like the other one's not talking enough smack. That doesn't help me want to watch the show. In fact, yeah. I now I really don't want to watch it. Right. All right. I thought you were gonna save us with the show. All right. Anyway. I could talk to Paul all night now. Now that I know there's a human side to him. What's her name? Like uh, Olga or something? Like what's what's the name? <laughs> Olga. Mean, that European. I don't know. What's like Svetson, Svetzel? I don't know. All right. Yeah, her name, yeah, her name is Broomhilda, and she drinks out of beer style. <laughs> yeah, what's up with you and Manny C? Like, Manny C is another one. Like, he's getting, like, these... these... I don't believe in Manny C. Pulse, do you believe Manny C? Uh, about what, his age or about him being no. in a relationship? Yeah, about that Polish chick. Like, and his age, but the Polish chick thing. I don't believe it. Well, if he, is, if he really is 40 years old, he's too old to be lying about that, so... <laughs> Yeah, I give him the benefit of the doubt. I know. Very I find cool. I find Pulse's story a little bit more believable than Manny C's. Well, we'll never know, Jess. It's we'll true. All right, Pulse. Everyone could be lying to us. Thank you for the call, man. You got it. Laters. Laters. You got it. You got very intimate with us. I can't believe Pulse has a human side. Love oh, life. I love it. How how funny. It makes you want to hug him. Pulse is the only character character. He's the only um, community member. That has gone like full, like full circle. Started with, off trolling with his storyline. Like, think about it. Like, if there was a movie about the MMA holes, Pulse has the first like yeah. fully like evolved character. And he stuck around. Like, he was legitimately terrifying in the beginning. You know, <laughs> like we thought he was going to try to kill us. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm saying we. It was you. But no, I didn't. I never thought Pulse was going to try and kill us. When he was sending gun I did, pictures, I did. You're the one who... What? <laughs> I never thought Paul was going to try and kill us. I did say that you certain things he fantastic. said was alarming, but yeah, that's scared. with anybody in the chat. Everyone says you alarming thought, you shit You said this... I quote you, Jess. He was too black to be comfortable with <laughs> That was Jesse's quote. I did say that. I said he's too black to be comfortable. <laughs> that's what I said. Uh, let's I see love Paul's man. Here. Oh, here we go. Manny C's on it. We're going to get to all you guys. Dr. C... Dr. C, you there? Oh. Hey, Dr. C, I figured this would be perfect back-to-back -back since Jesse believes Pulse over you. Yeah, I was hearing that, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, really, I mean, how much information can you, can you give us about this Polish girl? Pulse well, had I'm answers. Not seeing, I've not seen her currently, remember? She's, coincidentally, you're not seeing her? <laughs> It lasted like three weeks, dude. I'm not gonna marry her. Yeah, Pulse is Come more. Come on, man. Pulse, Pulse is he's more into this. Like Pulse is kind of in love. No. You know what? I I believe Pulse though because he lives in Houston too, right? Yeah. Uh, and there's a, I know there's he lives in Texas. Of, I don't know what part of Texas. Yeah, I, I believe he lives in Houston. There's a ton of like European people that move here because of oil, and they work for BP. Or their au pairs. There's a ton of au pairs that women that come and take care of very rich people's kids, 
and they go to college here. So yeah, there's. So are you saying of... Pulse is like is like the sugar daddy, Pulse. and and <laughs> this lady is just like uh, she's like I, I give you sex for. No. He's cat. He's he's no, catfishing no. as an oil no. tycoon. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying. What, what I'm are you saying implying, is, Manny? No, no. What I'm saying is, when Paul said, "Hey, I'm 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 dating a European chick," that's a thing I hear all the time from like my friends here in Houston. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? And there's always some Russian chick or some, yeah, you know. So yes, it's very common. So yeah, I believe that Pulse is dating a European chick. Yeah. Yeah, au pair. That's, that's it. <laughs> Okay. Very possible. You never know. Very possible. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what's going on? So anyway, uh, back to the MMA. Uh, I was thinking, hey, you know that BMF title was just a horrid idea, but why not make it like something where it has a unique set of rules, like we were saying, adding something to UFC. How about the BMF title be for a like no, like a straight fifteen minute round, you know? Where there is no break between the fight. What? A fighter can't so, even go that long without a break. Well, what do you say? I guess Absolutely. just yeah. keep the clock going until someone wins, right? Well, so say 15. <laughs> that wins are 15. Well, Pride had 10-minute rounds, remember? So Yeah, so the, B, the true BMF. So you're BMF, talking about going 15-minute rounds. True BMF yeah, would not yeah. need a break, he's saying. Yeah, because, you know, like most of the time the, the first round ends, there's someone winning. Like could potentially end the fight, and then the the round breaks, and then you pick him back up, and they start fighting from from the stand up, right? Which it's an unrealistic fight, right? If you were just fighting two people on the street, right? right. I think that right. you should make it twenty four hours. I say I say don't even feed them or no bathrooms. You just leave them in there until one dies, and then give the BMF belt to the the winner. Right. Well. So you know, that's one of the things the jiu-jitsu guys argued. They said, hey, listen, you know, if you look at the old school, like, we would win a lot of these fights. They'd be boring as hell, but we'd be on the ground, and we'd tire them out 45 minutes later. We'll choke them, right? Right. We would be Dude, Why are you saying so, right so much? What's that about? Do you hear how he's saying it, though? <laughs> right? Yeah, you never used to do that. Right? Is, that is that a new thing that you've added to your shtick? To my you say right all the time. What is that about? I didn't, choking, I right? didn't even uh, I didn't even uh, notice, but I guess y'all pay more attention to me than I do. <laughs> What's gonna happen now is every time you call in, everyone in the chat's gonna start saying right. right. We might have to make it an emoji. Right. Right. <laughs> it should be a oh, sound bite. Yeah, I do know it will never be added to a call in uh, song, that's for sure. Right. Well, but, yeah, uh, you're not there. We actually d yeah. got rid of the whole song altogether. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're so, saying 15 minutes, yeah. uh, BMF belt. I'm like so like over the BMF belt, but I'm cool for novelty weird shit. I I don't think I need this idea, but I'm not. I'll watch it. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> now we fucked him up. Hey, what so yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess last thing. Hey. Yeah. Last thing, you know, not MMA related. That that whole, you know, Amber Heard, um, Johnny Depp thing. I know you hate it, Moss, but hmm. JBH wasn't the Kate Moss thing super underwhelming. It's, yes, it yes. lasted like two minutes long, right? <laughs> it was two minutes, right? It was like I, I could not believe it. I honestly expected like a half hour testimony, right? But it ended up being only two minutes long, and I was completely, I was. I, 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 it felt like shitty. I felt like a shitty person after watching that, right? Well, I felt, I felt, but you know, like all they said was, did you, did he push you down the stairs? No. And right. Then, and then, that was it. Yeah, it's true. It's Terrible built. testimony, right? I caught the, uh, the tail end of it and I was just like, this is just dopey. Like, so Dude, silly. But the highlight was when the, when the, okay, this is how wacky this trials are. As the lawyer's leaving out, there's some lady with two alpacas. With pirate hats on. I heard what? about a lady that stood up in court two days ago, or two days before the trial ended, saying that it was a baby, saying that it was Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah. Right? That wasn't tell. Was it? Did you see it? Because I heard it wasn't televised. It wasn't. It was right before they started televising it. But she got kicked out, and it wasn't true. They ended up squashing that whole thing. But right, it was. It was terrible. Yeah, there was some lady with a stroller outside the whole time, and then she got in somehow, and then starts yelling about that it's it's Johnny's kid, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you see the alpacas? I did not. <laughs> no, there I got it. Could you put it in the Discord if you have a picture of it? There's a lady oh. with two alpacas 
If she one, has, they have one, pirate one. hats on. Wait, hold on. I want to hear about that. Hold on a second. I was just at a German bar Saturday. These ladies are definitely with the bussines. Bartender Milf wanted the Hearns. She was about to get the Contra code. Up, down, left, right, dip, skip. We will select start. <laughs> I can imagine Hearns at the bar. He's got a big wad of money. And as the drinks are coming, he's just fucking throwing those big ass tips over there. <laughs> like, I wish, I wish I had Hearns cash. It'd be fantastic. I would be like making it rain everywhere. The bitches, the Hearns could be running around with. I could only imagine. Hearns Bet you move. wish you were me, right? Anyway, back to Manny. Yeah, so you're saying alpacas with cowboy hats on? Yeah, with pirate hats on. Oh, uh, pirate this hats. Lady, she has them outside of the courthouse. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not really surprised. Do, we live, do there, we live in a bizarre world or what? What, well, what the heck is this? There were a lot of people who showed up. Why are we talking? There were Dude, a lot of the, there were a lot of people who showed up for the um I, for Johnny Depp. And these these thing. are the people why I hate this trial. Like when when they're showing videos of her and Depp leaving the courtroom and people are cheering them on. It's like don't you people have lives? Like who, like what are you doing sitting outside of a courtroom with llamas with pirate hats? Like what are we doing? Look at this with idiot. a lawyer. But would you not lawyer. go up to those llamas, Moss? I probably would pet them, but exactly. still, I wouldn't be there in the first place. This is dumb. Look at this that lawyer. That lawyer of Johnny Depp took a photos with the llamas. <laughs> so, this, is, this is fucking trial. What the, you know, as they're leaving, the people are cheering. I mean, what the heck is this? This is this is a court of law. No one should bring alpacas to a courthouse. I mean, you know, it's anyway. Yeah. So uh, hopefully they come to a verdict, and uh, you know, I think Johnny's innocent. Okay. All right, Maddie. Thanks for the call, man. All right. Thank you. Bye. Alpaca. Alpaca thesaurus. I was just going to say that, Moss. All right. Let's, let's rattle through these calls. Thank you for jumping in. Who do we got here? Uh, uh, Hello. Yo, Comic Unicorn. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey I'm doing well. How about y'all? I'm wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. What's going on? If you're wonderful, wonderful. Well, first of all, uh, I didn't know that Dr. That Dr. C was from Houston. I'm actually from Houston, too. Shit, is everyone from Houston, man? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah like, that's so crazy. It's like 80% of our chat's um, from Houston. We have like we have a very big <laughs> yeah. community from Texas. Like, yeah, we did a weird. Texas meetup. Meet Remember when we, oh, nice. when we drove through Texas? We should do a Texas meetup. We meet ran into, Why? who was that? Nick C, was it? Yeah, I, uh, was it Nick C? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure it was Nick C. he found us on the freaking, like, Texas is Yeah, he like, pulled up in an Arby's parking lot. Yeah. Yes, by all means. Hey, by all means, uh, come to Houston. Like, we <laughs> I think Houston would show up, man. I'd be down. I just got to stay away from the schools over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yikes, uh, Moss. Bro, yeah, right, right. Too right, soon. Right. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. So that was that was tasteless. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, well, first I want to get into MMA, and then there's something else that I want to talk about. So for the MMA stuff, so between now and the end of July, I mean, there's a lot of big fights on the horizon and also a lot of big title fights. And... Um, I wanted to ask, which one are y'all looking forward to the most? You know, because you got, you know, Izzy Cannoneer, you got the trilogy between Bulk and Holloway, Yuri Glover. Like, which one are y'all looking forward to the most? I mean, you know me. I'm I'm always biased for Izzy, so that's that's what I'm looking forward to. Hey, let's go. The reason why I'm not excited about the Izzy fight is, I I mean, I think we all know the outcome. You know, I, I but it's I mean, okay to be excited about it still. I mean, listen, I I don't I'm mind. Excited. Saying, yeah, Izzy's he's always fun. Like uh, he's got he's got that star power that I I want to see uh, get more amplified as we go along. I'm scrolling through some of the cards here, and um, I I tell you what, the London card, that London card is banging, like absolutely banging. It's so terrible. I would say the, I would say the London card for me. Yeah, I agree. In fact, I was actually thinking, well, it's either UFC London or UFC 276 just because of how stacked that card is, too, in terms of name value. But UFC London, you know, I'm actually thinking about getting a couple of friends and uh, showing them that UFC London card because it looks like it's going to deliver. This card is really good. Like, this is a fight night. It is fire. Absolute fire. We got our buddy Jordan fighting with Patty Pimblett. I mean, it, all the way down to, like, the first fight over here. Not really a I sleeper know. or a snoozer. And even the chick fights are interesting. It's you not are like, interested in the chick fights? Meeple versus Hannah Goldie, I'm interested in. Yes. I am. What? Because Hannah Goldie's got her OnlyFans thing. 
You know, we've had the pleasure of interviewing her back in the day. You know, she's running you know, around they naked. They gave Meatball a layup in that fight. I mean, maybe, possibly. And this broad over here, Victoria Leonard. I don't even know how the hell she's in the UFC, to be honest. This crazy chick from the fucking Contender Series. She's she's like that guy. Oh, what the hell is that fighter? That weird guy. He, she looks just like him, too. Do you know what I'm talking about? That bizarre guy with the Frankenstein face. I think he got cut. Real strange looking dude. Just got finished. No. I ah, forget it. Someone help me in the chat. If you can get it, I'll give you a cookie. I'll send you a cookie. A cookie? Yeah. Where are you going to get a cookie from? I don't know. Mexican but yeah, this cookie? this is my card. And it's a fight night. So that's kind of weird. Yeah, for sure. And that's, what, that's what makes it better. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to get some friends into like UFC MMA. Because, man, I've had so much trouble like getting friends into watching MMA and whatnot. I recently got lucky. And I've been going to like watch parties and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's it's so annoying. Whenever you show them a fight, like it's usually one of the more boring ones. Like 274, right? So I actually uh, had a friend that had that uh, hadn't hung out in a while, and I wanted to show him the UFC. And uh, the fights that he saw, so he saw Randy Brown versus Chaos Williams. That was a good fight. Mm -hmm. uh, Randy Brown was a good performance. But then the next one was Shogun versus OSP, which, I mean, Shogun's a legend, and I tried pumping him up. Like I was like, oh, he's used to fight in Pride. Is this and that, you former UFC light heavyweight champion, pride champion, and then you know the fight, you know was pretty lackluster. So that was unfortunate. And then he decided to leave, and right after that was you know Tony versus uh, Chandler. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that that's a bummer. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. It's it, it's so funny that I think the running joke, and it's happened to me a million times. Anytime I try to get someone into a UFC fight, it's usually them laying on each other and and like the the person would be like this is just like gay like <laughs> like that's what my my <laughs> friends would say this is ridiculous like how do you watch this yeah and then the funny part about that is we had this gay friend it was a, an ex of mine's gay friend uh that would show up and he would like say this is hot like <laughs> he would be like oh this is really hot and i was like oh man this doesn't help <laughs> this doesn't help the oh, cause in any way you know but um i mean uh, it, you know it, Either you're into it or you're not. You know, I think I think if you have it in you and you just like watching people get beat up or beating someone else up, you know, you're going to like it. If, if you're not into that stuff, some people think it's just too violent, you know? So it is annoying, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. I, I get what you're saying, it, though. Like, it's like to because there's not a lot of people out there in the normal world that are just MMA fans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would, that's why this channel started because I had a small clique of friends that would watch the fights, but then when people started getting lives and doing other things, they kind of were like, everyone was, you know, I had no one to watch the fights with anymore. So we had to resort to the internet. Yeah, no, um, I agree. And that's actually really cool. Like in terms of how, how MMA whole started. And, um, I actually, I actually went back to watch, uh, some of your, uh, beginning videos. I think the first fight, the first card that you called uh, was UFC 203. And uh, I mean, I could tell, man, like you looked super excited. Everyone was pumped up. Was it the and, Stipe uh, fight? Stipe, and, sorry. Yeah, Stipe over Overeem. Okay. That was, that was the headline. Yeah, I had so that night. I mean, it was it was, it was like AIDS. It was on a cell phone or something. I can't remember, but like barely anyone was watching. And I had to like get my friends to drink. And they were so awkward. They didn't want to be there. I felt so bad. I was like dragging them through this whole thing. Um, but yeah, that was like a night of just hanging out, just hanging out and watching some fights. And um, you know, and then we stopped doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it all it all fell apart. So, do you have any? So you said right now you don't have any like close friends that really you go to watch parties. You said. So, um, yeah. So I recently graduated from university and there was this like I recently found out that there's these guys that love watching UFC fights okay and uh this was up until so last year like uh like I knew who they were but I didn't really hang out with them but then I started I learned that they were UFC fans and so from actually I remember the first car that I saw with them was UFC 263 I would go to one of their houses we'd all watched it and it was cool because you know they're not casual fans like they know their stuff and like they've been watching the UFC okay for a while now but um Oh, man, I've, I've been trying, and uh, I've had, like, this is something, like, over a long time. Like, I remember, so I was that weird kid in middle school that liked watching MMA fights. And every time I would talk about it, people would be like, oh, who's who's John Jones? Who's Anderson Silva? Like, nobody was interested. 
Mm-hmm. And then when I would show them fights and highlights, it would be like, why are they just on the ground like that? Like, what are they doing? And it's like, oh, man. And so I kind of gave up. But now I'm trying to, like, get more friends into it. You know what you need? You need more Conor McGregor's and Ronda Rousey's. That you need. That's how the casuals get. You need people with the theatrics selling these fights. And then next thing you know, because when I got into it, it was like, like when I seriously got, like, I watched, Mayhem Miller was a guy. A Chael Sonnen, uh, Anderson Silva was a skill guy, but it was usually the guys on the mic that made me interested. Um, and then when Connor came in, like I was already into it, but when Connor came in, I was like so headfirst into. It. I thought it was great. Ronda Rousey, the whole deal when Brock Lesnar was fighting, uh, that was interesting to me. Like that's what you need. You need these big personalities outside of the cage, and then these casuals are gonna get right in. Like if you told a friend that um, someone in WWE is fighting or someone that has some sort of celebrity status or just as funny as all hell on the mic, that's how you drag in those casuals that are just like, what is this crap? Yeah, I agree. I mean, Connor and Ronda, I mean, well, Connor still has that it factor, but I mean, Ronda at her peak, I mean, she had that it factor. She was everywhere. I remember, like, she was even, I think she may have even commentated or, like, she took place reporting for the nfl like it was on a fox game i don't even remember but like she was there and she was in movies mm-hmm. uh talk shows you know crazy but yeah i agree and with connor you know it's funny you, you mentioned connor uh i was actually talking to another group of friends who like they don't watch too much but like i told them about ufc and the first two names that came out of one of my friends mouths the first name that came out was connor mcgregor the second name was john jones and i mean hmm. no surprise i mean there's two of the most recognizable names yeah, John Jones. Yeah, I agree. John Jones is it's funny because well, he's he's gotten into so much trouble as well that got him in the news and I think that's got people's attention as well. But um his talent alone, you know, it's it's tough to ignore that. It, that's the thing like people shit on the stars, like the big mouth or the big celebrities that come in that may not be the best actual MMA fighters, but people shit on these people that are growing the sport. And the reason why they shit on it is because they want the UFC to stay where it is. They don't want it to grow and be super mainstream because it's like the band that they used to love and that band sold out with the these later albums, you know? Like it's like with me with the band Korn back in the day. I loved the first two albums and they went mainstream and I was like, "Ah, it's not my thing." I feel like MMA fans are like that. Like they don't they they're so fucking like, I want this to be my thing and no one else's thing. Whereas there's fans like you that would like to have other people to celebrate these fights with, you know? So, big stars are important. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I hope the sport can continue to grow, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, oh, another thing I wanted to ask. So, for you two, uh, so what are y'all, what's, what is your favorite fight, like, of all time? Ah, it's such a hard question, man. Favorite fight of mm. all time. That is I, a really good question, though. I tell you what, a fight that drove me wild, and that I thought it went one way while watching, and then watching the replay, I thought it went another way, was Connor Diaz two. Hmm. That fight I could watch over and over again. I, that was a banger to me. Favorite such a back and forth fight, time? and it just so happens to have like my favorite fighter fighting. So I would go Conor Diaz. I mean, you got Lawler versus uh, Shit, McDonald. Man. That's always thrown oh. in. That's a tough. That's a tough question to answer. Izzy Gaslam was really good. Oh, that was great. Oh, Izzy Gaslam was amazing. That is, uh, I mean, for me, it's top five all time in UFC history. Yeah, Izzy Gaslam was was really. You know, it's a good fight. Paulo Costa versus um, Yo Romero. Romero. Oh, oh God! <laughs> that fight was a banger. We all and it, it, it lived up to expectations because I mean I feel like I mean at least me leading up to it like I knew that fight was going to be a banger. We all knew, and mm-hmm. I mean it delivered, man. It was amazing. Yeah, Emmett versus Burgos. I mean you can go back and and there's like there's so many there's really no wrong answer. There's so many great fights, but I'm trying to think of one. You know it, it includes my guy. And some say he lost, some say he won. I thought Connor lost originally when I watched that that the the sequel, and then I watched it back. I was like, I think Connor got it. But still, like a, a fight like that, back and forth, one round that goes this way, next round it goes that yeah. way. The shit talking, like it was just oh so fucking good. Lola McDonald was fantastic. Although Lola McDonald, if I'm not mistaken, did it start a little slow? I can't remember. I can't like it the, did right. No, yeah, it did. Like the comment, yeah, like even I think Joe Joe Rogan, like they were saying like, oh, they're. You know they're they're kind of waiting. They're kind of feeling it out. Yeah, something along those lines. But yeah, I did get it. Like I think people. I think 
have to go back and watch the fight. But I think people were even like booing at certain points. Yeah, it's, so there I remember. A lot of activity. Yeah, when I met, when I told Jesse to watch that fight, I remember you. I watched it back again. I was like, damn, maybe this is not the one because it, when it starts picking up, it's fantastic. You, you got Roy McDonald's mm -hmm. nose is inside out for God's sakes, and Robbie Lola's <laughs> lip is. <laughs> he's got like three mouths. It open. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what people remember the most about that fight for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, that iconic stare down and yep. whatnot. Yeah, it was wild. But, um, uh, I'm trying to think. So my favorite fight is, uh, for me, it's going to be Jones versus Gustafson 1. Oof. And to put it short and sweet, for me, I mean, that fight was both technical and brutal at the same time. Which one? Jones versus Gustafson. Oh. You know how great that fight was? I remember exactly why I was that day. Yeah. I remember my uncle was a big boxing fan, and I was like, you have to watch this. This yeah, is was amazing. A good one. That fight was fire. Absolute fire. It was great. And there, and a lot of people thought Gustafson won that fight. Uh, yeah, it's this a good day. one. Yeah. Yeah. I think fights that like you could argue both ways, like it, it goes to a decision. It's it's like exciting beginning to end. It could go either way. That to me has to be the fight like fights that you have to have people watch back a fight that results in a finish i think would fall under a different category that would be something like uh the first fight between silva and Kale sonnen mm -hmm. kind of although that was more of like oh what a, like an incredible comeback there's one or, another or one deal. that stands out too was um hold on one second jesse's checking on the baby uh bigfoot silva versus mark hunt I don't know if you've seen that one. The first. Oh, one. No, yes, I've seen it. The first one. Yes, yes, the Ooh. first one. Yeah, it was a crazy one. Wasn't that a draw? Crazy back and forth. It was a draw, and uh, although there was controversy, and I mean, Mark Hunt has referred to it later because uh, I think. Let me see. Hold on. Bigfoot. Well, Bigfoot. Or, yeah, said. because Bigfoot did test positive for something. Let mm -hmm. me see. That fight. If you haven't seen that fight, check that fucking. That was wild. Wild. Yeah, Volkanovski was, versus I mean, Ortega was great, but and and I think with Volkanovski Ortega, you look at that fight as the great escape. How Volkanovski escaped Ortega's death grip, I mean, was one of the best escapes ever. Yeah, that 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 might be. I mean, that was one of the greatest rounds in UFC history. Mm -hmm. I would say. Bonner Griffin goes without saying, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, Bonner Griffin. I, w I would say yes, although that was that was before my time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did get to. Oh, there's a, an underrated fight that I don't see a lot of people talk about anymore. Uh, this was oh Gilbert Melendez versus Diego Sanchez. Fantastic. That was that was a creep. Like I I recently rewatched it, and um, I remember. I mean, that was a. I remember that fight being crazy. Like it was one of those fights. So Gilbert was up two rounds to none but Diego like knocked Gilbert down in the third round and I remember watching it live I was like oh my god no way. Yeah, oh man it's a crazy fight because yeah. Gilbert was coming off of that like I think he had fought for the title and he lost and so it was kind of like a number one contender fight Gilbert Melendez he, I wanted him to win a belt so bad when he came into the UFC I was so excited to see him in the UFC and he kind of fell flat and then he got nailed with the steroids and I was like ah oh, fuck man what a what a mess with Gilbert, but yeah, that fight was amazing. I remember very clear. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, I think that, yeah that was the same night that uh, Kane won the trilogy against JDS. Man, twenty thirteen in general was a crazy year. That's right, that, that was, was the, year the same that, night. Yeah, that, yeah, because oh man, that that was the year that Silva finally lost. I mean, that broke my heart. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lie, that broke my heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind and, of bittersweet uh, for me because um, Weidman being a, like a Long Island, New York guy, um, I don't know. It was something about that. Like I love Anderson Silva. He's one of the guys. Like he's one of the greats, if not the greatest, to me. Um, and mm -hmm. still doing it right. Was he three and one in boxing now? Like what? It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that was a weird yeah. night, right? Yeah, uh, that was a crazy night. Yeah, that was a very. Uh, uh, Georgia, I remember that fight was like one of the first fights like we were stealing a pay-per-view for that and it kept cutting out on us and I was like oh my god oh, no. <laughs> yeah, what's going on <laughs> yeah we were all trying to get the link and shit it was a messy night that night but I, I did get the uh, the meat of that fight the, the important part at least yeah see I, yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it like 
there's like very few fights where I've seen someone lose and like I've been shocked. So that that was like probably like the first fight where I I couldn't even say anything. I couldn't even move. Mm-hmm. The other one that uh so I'm a big so like you guys know I'm a big Aldo fan. When Connor knocked out Jose Aldo, oh my god, that was uh, that. Oh god. Yeah, I was in my buddy's basement, and uh, I was so nervous, man. I was so fucking nervous because I, you know, I'm the Connor guy, so I like I was I was genuinely nervous. Oh, I was nervous too. I mean, oh, Jose I was Aldo too, sure. was literally unbeatable. Like he was, he was so scary how good he was, and yeah, and he. But you know what happened, right? Like I mean, Aldo, he yeah, of he he lost before that fight. Like you, Connor was clearly in his brain, and the UFC. Oh, absolutely. The UFC didn't help it. Like the UFC let Connor get away with murder with snatching his belt and the whole tour. Like the UFC like set Aldo up to fail. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and man, I remember. Oh uh, man, I remember. I thought to myself, I was so, I was, I was super nervous because anything can happen. But I thought to myself, Connor is gonna have me. Uh, the karma, the karma is gonna catch up to Connor. It has to catch up to him. Mm-hmm. It has to, you know, because of the world tour and like that little ultimate, like even like on the Ultimate Fate Fighter, and uh, how he was talking, like because remember that fight was gonna be UFC 189, but then mm-hmm. it got canceled because of a. Uh, foot injury for Aldo, mm-hmm. and um, and again, like Connor was like doing his thing. He's like, "Oh, he wanted to find a way out." I was like, "No, nah, no." Nah. Like when time comes, he's gonna win, but it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that was not but, his his night for sure. All right, comic uh, unicorn. I mean, Appreciate the call. We got yeah, we got to get to some other calls. All right, bud. Absolutely. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, you too. All right, you too. There he is, comic unicorn. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, whoa, we got a donation coming in over here. Oh. Super chat. Joshua rhyming with the 30. Shogun versus Tito. All right. All right. All right. A savage $30 donation. Come on. Joshua rhyming. Making it rain. All right. Pick someone else. If you if you're trying to get through, keep calling. I gotta use the uh, little boys' room. I'll be right back. And thank you, Joshua. You are a savage. Thank you, everyone that donated tonight. Thank you very much. Drunk Savage. What's up, man? Yo. How's it going? Uh, not bad. Not bad. Not great? Yeah. What? what do you want from me? I want, I want a, a Drunk Savage that is uh, on cloud nine. Uh, you're not going to get that tonight, but <laughs> I'm in a decent mood. All right, what's going on? That. So, uh, if you guys decide to do the donation with Khabib, you know, the brother, I miss you, hug you. I think yeah. it should be like country western. What do you think? Like, uh... is it, is it like playing country western? Like, brother, I miss you and I hug you. Come <laughs> wait, on. Wait, give that to us again. Hold on. Hold on. Give, it, give <laughs> us one more try. Said, brother, I miss you. I you. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be our next donation. Thank you, Drunk. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll relay the message to um to Moss and, and let him know since he's in charge of all the donation songs. But that was pretty good, yeah, if you so ask me. Only style of music you guys don't have. Yeah, yeah. Wait, why don't we have a Western donation song? It's a pretty good <laughs> question. You know, I was thinking while I was tinkling. The Habib, we do have a Habib donation, Habib time. Maybe if we just swapped out Habib time with the new Habib donation. But he's saying it's be make good, it a though. Western. A country song, a Western is a movie. Yeah, he, it, it goes, brother, I miss you, I love you. Well, how much? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I could I probably. hug you, right? Not I love so, you, yeah, I hug you. If you sing it, Jesse, I'll make the No, uh, Drunk sang it. Song. It was actually really good. Yeah, well, all right, so we're not having Habib's clip. We're just going to have you sing his words? No, do the clip and then have Drunk singing um, Brother, I Miss You, I Hug You in a Western tone. Brother, I Miss You, I Hug You. And then at the end, you can put that sound bite. But have Drunk singing it in his Western accent. Uh, there you go. Um, Brother, I miss you, I hug you. It's gonna be That would be tricky. It would, it would. I don't know how the hell... I don't know how we could pull that off, but I could try. 
Yeah. I could try. Or do a private call with, with Drunk on like Instagram or something. But I don't understand how you're going to get that sound bite as a country song, though. Like, no. Drunk has to be the country singer. And at the end, or like in between, you can pull in like the little sound bite. Here's the problem. So I would have to slow down his voice, right? But I miss you. I hug you. No, like keep it like that, but have Drunk be the main song. See, this is the problem. Him singing. And then, That'd be like the backup vocals. Or yeah, something. and then that'll be like the back, like little. What's well, got to be a fast country just, song then, right? Yeah, and it'll, it, well, country's not always fast, but have drunk. No, it has to it. be because he's talking fast. And drunk savage will go, brother, I miss you, I hug you, and then, you can like, tell Jesse's never written bite, a song. <laughs> a little sound bite in there. I don't know how you would. Maybe pull this will be my creation. Yeah, drunk. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll make Je Jesse. I'll give her a creative freedom. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I will figure she it out. She clearly has no idea what she's doing because I'm like, how the fuck are you gonna make <laughs> that into a. All right, drunk, uh, you and I, we'll, we'll come up with something together. <laughs> we'll call it drunk tree. Yeah, you do like a duet. We'll yeah. make it drunk tree music, right? Instead of country, drunk I, tree. We'll call, I'll call you on Instagram and I'll record you singing your part. And then I'll sing my part and then we'll pull you in a little Khabib it would have to be a fast. Bite. It would have to be a fast country song. So like, Brother Rummus, you a hug you. Yeah, it would have to be like a save the horse, <laughs> save a horse, ride a cowboy. A beat yeah, or something. Uh, movie, uh, Dewey, Dewey Cox, Walk Hard. No. Uh, yes, yes, I did. It's it's hysterical. We you know him and the chick singing that song. Let's do it, like something like that. I don't know. I would have to listen to it. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I think we could make something happen. I I, I would make a country song. I have no problem with doing it though. Yeah. I, you would? Yo, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Let me hear your country song. Because you don't have to be a good sing. Brother, I miss you. I, I hug you. A brother, I miss you. I hug you. Actually, you're pretty good. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I fuck my brother and I miss you and I hug you. Okay, you're not bad. Like you gotta do that like weird crackle in the voice. Like country singers all sound like they're. Are you gonna they, play a band? They all sound in like Manny C. In the song too. <laughs> they all have the crackle in the voice. Oh god, that actually wasn't bad, Moss. Yeah. Okay. We should do like a threesome donation. Drunk, Moss, and myself. And on a donation doing the um, country country singing. I think we should start getting our our community in on How am I going to do that songs. if I can't even get you in the song? Well, you get drunk, so call him on Instagram. <laughs> you won't even do the song. All right. Call him on Instagram, and then you could record the call and him singing his parts, and then you could clip it. I'll make the song tomorrow. If you if you get involved, why do have, I have to get involved? For if you have drunk involved, that is, that is fantastic. Having a community member involved, especially an OG, like that is awesome. Instead no, I'll DM you the fucking song I was talking about, and you're here. Why we need the female voice? <laughs> well, you know, we'll find a female. Get Kendall or that one girl to do it. Why do I have to sing it? Because it's your idea. No, it's Drunk's idea. Well, you're you're signing off on it. So you well, have I to just think it's a good idea. That's all. <laughs> I could do a country song. I could do it. It's, it's like the easiest genre we could do. If I could do a Jamaican song. I mean, if I could do, <laughs> if I could do fucking Jamaican. You could do I, anything, really, yeah. I could do a country song. I don't think that'd be that hard. Yeah. But yeah, it has to be a fast one. That's that's the tricky part. Like, if you do a slow one, super you easy. You can't do country music fast. What do you mean? You this... can't. I've never heard a fast country song. What are you talking about? Name a fast what are you country song. Talking about Garth Brooks. I mean, what? Country songs. There's what? a ton All right, of fast drunk, country songs. Sing a fast country song for me, real quick. I've never heard Look one. Look, I know. I listen to like only Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson. They're all slow. Yeah, I've never heard a fast country song. I'm not uh, saying they don't exist. Was it like no, I've heard fast. Um, oh, what's that fucking song? Way down young on Tahuki, and I knew it was my what it meant to me. Who's that fucking guy? I don't know. I can't stand. I can't you stand on country song. music. I'm, I'm sure we can figure out how to make it work. If we do need to speed it up, I'm sure we can figure it out. It's super simple. But I demand we get drunken on it because I think you should start getting community members in. But here's the thing, though. Hold on a second. Making a Habib song a country song. It just, it's hilarious. But it just doesn't work. You it's know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? It don't work. No, the line, brother, I miss you, I hug you. No. That sounds like no, a country no, no, song. No, if you're going to make a country song, you make a Cowboy Cerrone country song. Uh, no, What are you Mark, doing? You're Bro, missing it. Come on, we could give birth to fucking Ru Russian country music. See, this, is, this, is why, this is why I do all the writing tonight. <laughs> Cowboy, you have to open Jess, your mind to other people's Jess, ideas. There are clips of Cowboy Cerrone crying. 
We could make a sad country so why song don't you then? What, with Cowboy Cerrone because NH would kill us. You could add him to the mix. <laughs> yeah, add him to the mix. <laughs> now, Cal have Cal it be Cowboy Space, and then someone singing "Brother, I Miss You, I Hug You" in get a country this, get voice. Get Khabib out and of the Cowboy Khabib song. And then soundbite coming in with that stupid ass fucking comment. I think it's hilarious. Oh my god, this is it, why it, I write it really the music. Is. But Cowboy Cerrone though, crying on uh, about his son. Like you, you didn't make anything out of that. That could so. be made into a country song. Now we're talking. But, but Why is it going to be someone crying? Why can't it just be because like... Because we can make, then we can make the slow one. Yeah? Yeah. What's it going to be? Wait, him sobbing? Off oh, my God. Off top of your head. Come on, Mystic Moss. Like Let's hear it. All right. Habib wants... Uh, Jesse wants a Habib country song. No, Drunk wanted it. I think it's a good idea. All right. Let's move on. This okay. is, well, how this about is, this? Me... We, we don't even put Habib's voice in. We just have Jesse do a Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. See, and we kill it. Yeah, See? come on. That works. That's funny. Come on, Moz. That's not funny to you. You're losing me now. All come right, what on. else we got? That's funny. <laughs> this is getting autistic ideas. real quick. Uh, all right, so what else uh, we got? Yeah, so, um, fucking, I got to bring this up again. Jorge Masvidal, this is the fucking dumbest motherfucking MMA fighter out there. Did you hear what he fucking said about the fucking case going on right now? I heard him is back and forth with Connor, which we should uh, tap into. But is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's or? another thing I was gonna bring up later. But I'm oh, okay. fucking trying to say he's innocent in assaulting Kobe because oh, I'm from oh. a different fucking world, dude. You don't know I'm from the streets. He can't assault my fuck or insult my fucking family like that. Like motherfucker, we brought this up before. He didn't insult your goddamn family. He called you Debbie Dad. That's not insulting the family. That's insulting you. Yeah. This is all yeah. fucking ego. It yeah, I actually have the I have the article here. You want me to read it real quick? Connor, what he said to uh, Jorge is yeah. So it says Jorge Masvidal publicly pro proclaims innocence following Covington the Covington incident, according to MMAnews.com. Masvidal says he's an innocent man following his alleged altercation with Colby Covington in Miami. Masvidal allegedly assaulted Covington outside of Miami area restaurant earlier this year. This came just weeks after his UFC 272 headliner with Covington in which he lost via unanimous decision. Masvidal is looking ahead to a return to the Octagon later this year, that, but that could be delayed due to his ongoing legal issues. He faces a felony charge of aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, his hands and fists, with intent to cause bodily harm. Masvidal has pleaded not guilty to the charge and posted a $5,000 bail after a brief stay in jail. During a recent interview with ESPN, Masvidal explained his mindset ahead of his trial and publicly proclaimed his innocence. He said, I come from a different place than many people, and we walk differently in that place. I am not going to let anyone disrespect my family. I can't talk much because I'm being charged with three felonies. I can only say that I'm innocent. I tell you what, uh, Connor's thing over here, an absolute pigeon brain. This guy is stupid beyond belief. <laughs> Hilarious, because That's it's true. Right. He's not wrong. And uh, what the hell is this allegedly when he made a fucking video like 10 minutes after it fucking happened, put it on Twitter, yeah. admitting to it. Yeah, I agree. I think honestly, I people like this. I think that I don't know if it's pride and ego. I don't know if it's like um, delusion. Oh, it's ego. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but people like this, they believe that everything they they can do no wrong. You know, so it's it's unfortunate to see something like this because Masvidal really made a name for himself in the UFC, and to see him spiral down this road and and to have Conor McGregor, who's fucked up a million times. Especially with the law, to say something like that, I mean, that should be a that should be a huge sign right there that you're you know you're kind of acting like a fucking idiot, you know? Exactly, and it's like fucking Jorge had 25 minutes to beat his fucking ass legally, and he failed to do that. I mean, yeah. maybe if Kobe had like ducked him or something, okay, I would cut him a little slack on this fucking old shit, but he had a chance to fucking beat his ass, and he failed to do that. Yeah. this is all ego with him. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, not sure what the mindset is, honestly. Yeah, well, well now, well, this whole Connor back and forth, Masvidal is running with it, and he, you know, he's trying to make this fight happen now, which I don't blame him. This is like, this is smart here to to say, okay, I got Connor's attention now. Let's make this fucking fight go. Uh, he says this pea brain is the biggest fight of your life, so you're either too scared or too stupid to get this check. Now, listen, Jorge, <laughs> who's getting the check here? Um, <laughs> it's Jorge, yeah. It's, Who is it? you're, bro, you're getting the check. Yeah. So it's like Jorge even tweets, 
Like, even is like, what are we doing? Like, can someone proofread this? Like, does he have a publicist or something to say, Jorge, you got to do better than this? Yeah, I think I'm with drunk. I think it's ego. His ego is so big and so inflated that, like, he believes he's God's gift to the world, you know? Like, he could have went with the whole Nate Diaz situation of how he beat the fuck out of Nate Diaz for the BMF belt. He could have went that route, dragged Nate into the situation, and, and basically said, Connor, what'd you do to the guy? Yeah. You know? Like, he could have went that route, but he's trying to say that Connor's going to get a big check. Connor gets a big check if he fights fucking uh, B. Arthur, digs her up, and, and fucking fights her from the Golden Girls. Yes. I mean, she, he could fight anybody yeah. and get a big check. Like, what, what kind of delusional statement is this? It's, it's fucking weird. Man. Just, I have no fucking clue how Mossel fans can defend this guy at this point. Just, no. He's a fucking idiot. How do you? Sorry. Go, yeah, how do you go from rock star... Right, the three piece in the soda, sweet street Jesus, the whole thing to com complete laughing stock. Like he just keeps on taking L's now. It's like, bro, put Twitter down or something, or get someone, hire someone to handle this for you. Like, what are you doing? Exactly. Maybe he needs to fucking give his Twitter over to Ali Abdozi. <laughs> yeah, give it to Ali, so he could just scramble the words and speak gibberish gis you know, for him. I know she hasn't been pipping his alcohol at all. Maybe he got dropped by them. Who, Jorge? Yeah, that alcohol he had. He hasn't been pipping oh, it. Oh, wait, wasn't that his... I think it was like... It was a vodka, right? It was, it was under... Jorge Cuevo. No, it was a... <laughs> or was it a tequila? Uh, it's not a vodka. It's a type of tequila, I think, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I haven't seen much about it. I have no idea. John Jones was drinking it at night. He got fucking arrested trying to get some homeless guys to blow him. <laughs> Yeah, the Jorge, it's a, it's a shame, man. If you're a Jorge fan, I could, I mean, it's got to be frustrating. It's getting frustrating now. Now, if Jorge somehow convinces Connor to fight him, and Jorge sparks Connor, beats the shit out of him, that is like here's the thing with this fight: it only helps Jorge. It does nothing. This yeah. fight does nothing for Connor. Well, that's why he's saying what he's saying because he wants to make it seem like he's doing Connor a favor, you know. But at the end of the day, we all know Connor would be doing him a favor. Yeah, th there's no upside. Even if Connor beats Jorge, Jorge's on a skid. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't do anything for Connor. Like, and uh, what money? Connor gets money fighting anybody. So Connor he, gets money walking down the street. Connor doesn't need money. Yeah, it's weird. I, I, hey, credit to Jorge for shooting his shot, right? That you got to do that, but you, you got to do a little better job. I mean, if you're gonna try to lure him in, you got to try something a little better than this. It's, it's but weird. But you know they've always wanted to put that BMF belt on Connor, so it could happen. But do you think Connor? I don't know. Connor. Hold on. Red Leg says it's a good matchup for both guys. No. Stylistically, yes. As no, a, as no, a, no. hold on. As a fan, yes. It's fun. No doubt about it. But why would Connor take that fight? I was just going to say, Connor, Connor knows what he's worth. There's no reason. He gets nothing from that fight. Unless they put a, do unless well, you put, he does take a revise. you put the BMF or belt hey, on the line. He has fucking fans, casual fans that will tune in. No, you know, but, there's a bunch of motherfuckers out there. Be like, I want to see Jorge beat Connor to fuck his ass. Yeah, but yeah, but, but Connor he wouldn't would, allow that to he happen. He would make more with Nate. Would he? Yeah, of course he would. Jorge, the only reason why Jorge made the money he did, it's proof he fought Nate. Like Nate, Nate was the draw, and and the Kamara Usman card. He had two other title fights on there as well. Jorge needs help. Nate, True. Nate could fucking headline mm -hmm. a card by himself. And he's he's already okay. he's utilized the Connor movement, and now Nate's like fucking mega, you know. So I mean, Covington. I mean, who does Jorge have to fight anymore? He's got yeah. He's he's kind of in limbo Jorge now. Jorge is fucked. Let's be real. Jorge's fucked. Well, for title, yes, but he can still make big paychecks. He's got these legal issues now. There's no title opportunity for him. Jorge, he's like re he's grasping at straws on Twitter. The guy is fucked. Let's let's call let's. Call it what is it? Call a spade a spade. Like this guy, this guy is doing everything he possibly can to stay relevant. <laughs> By the way, can we all say goodbye to the King James, the Jorge Masvidal simp? See you later, buddy. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> How dare you say anything you know bad about Street Jesus? When oh people my God. in the chat are like, I'm leaving, bye, as if like, See you later. we're going to end the show now because they're leaving. You don't fit my narrative. Oh, shoot, they're leaving. My feelings Guess are we're hurt. Done, guys. <laughs> get out of here, buddy. Go to sleep. Yeah, get out of here and go fuck your mother. It's past your bedtime, so bro. <laughs> it's past your bedtime. All right. 
Um, but yeah, the whole situation's weird. I listen, if Jorge could find a way to finagle this fight, Jorge wins. No matter yeah. what. Win or lose, you he wins because he's gonna get a nice big chunky yeah, paycheck. I, I agree. I think I think Masvidal is doing everything he possibly can, as I was saying. To stay relevant because he realizes now that he is he's he's going down a, he's on a downward spiral you know like what else can he do to accommodate to the fans that he's acquired during this whole fucking hype that he's he's made up you know yes all right we got to move on because we have limited time uh, anything oh, are you else? gonna give it a try uh, yeah sandwich? sorry I, I just want to say uh, congrats to you on your Rangers victory but Thank you know you. they gotta face Tampa Bay now motherfucker yeah. <laughs> Don't Listen, worry, Drunk. Don't worry. Drunk, your team, the Panthers, won the President's Trophy. Best team in the league. Got swept by the uh, the Lightning. So now you're jumping over to the Lightning because they're in Florida, right? So you're going to jump on over to them. Hey, Florida team is Florida team in my book. Yeah. As long as they beat the Rangers. That's not how it works, Drunk. Uh, That's not how it I works. I think you should uh, kind of, you know, you should post like Ellie with trainer face. <laughs> and tag the fucking Rangers like, yo, this is your fucking good luck charm right here. We really say thank should. You. Why aren't we doing that? Because honestly, all I want the Rangers to do is win. We have to keep it sacred. I can't. I can't think about anything. Not. I just. One, I just one. need wins. I need dubs. Everyone has the ability to improve the chat. Some when they log in, others when they leave. <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> uh, you can't be sensitive on this show, man. You can't. Oh boy, Tom. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, listen, some jokes go there, and it's up to you as to whether or not uh, you accept them. If you don't, you know, hope you find a community that accommodates you well. Only for yeah. only Jorge uh, Masvidal fans. Quick, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, last thing real quick. Uh, you know, I was joking the other, yesterday about uh, you should make a section for Pulse's picks on the website, but what about, like, a section for uh, gambling? Like, you guys could give your picks on the card so, and like you can let other people give their fucking picks yeah and have the link right there for my bookie yeah so um i actually i've considered it but the only thing is is i'm not entirely sure how the laws work with that so i don't want to obviously get us into any trouble um i would love to um, to i would love to host something like that but i would have to look into it really deep and read all the fine print before i can you know pull something like that off just because like I don't want any repercussions to come bouncing back on us for doing something we weren't supposed to do you know yeah. we'll just call it the message board be like I can't help what people talk yeah. about we're just giving <laughs> off fucking pics yeah yeah I would love to do something like that maybe I will I'll look into it and see you know like we have a lawyer that we talk to and stuff about these things so maybe that he could help but um yeah I don't know I don't know what the whole fucking deal with that is I, I'm pretty sure gambling is very complex so you know, it's, yeah. not, it's not a bad idea, though. It's, I, I think yeah. um, yeah. Uh, we can we can probably finagle if we can get our next phase in, get it completed. Um, we can. There's a lot of options yeah. for sure. It would be fun. It would definitely. By the be way, fun. the website's fucked up again. Oh, I'm not surprised. No, this is not good, man. Like, yeah. like it doesn't even show that we're live. All know. right, and lastly, I just want to say, you know, I hope you all have happy Memorial Day. Not, no, Ma said you shouldn't say happy, but yeah, it kind of should. I mean, celebrate. I mean, Come on, let's face it, you know, these people gave their lives so that you could have a fucking happy day today. It's you know, true. you should honor that. Like, look around at your life. I know there's a lot of bad shit happening, but just look around your life and be grateful for what the good stuff you do have. That's right. Love it, drunk. Every time I think about Memorial Day, I'm like, haha, I'm live, you're not. What? No, come on, not like that. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Or? No. Oh, okay. cool. I thought that's what you were saying. You said no? these people fought and gave their lives for you to have the freedom to sit here oh. on YouTube and make these stupid ass jokes. Oh shit, drunk. I thought I thought we were on the same page. Okay, I guess we're not. No. Uh, is. <laughs> I'm grateful for you guys in the community. You, know, you keep me sane. Love we're grateful all. for you, drunk. All right, drunk. Yep. Yeah. Right, later, slap much. Take care. Later, right. slap nut. By the way, I'm kidding. If you tuned in earlier, you could hear my real thoughts on memorial day we oh did you make remember. a little speech of course i did what you gotta you remember the vets baby you get you do i'm not gonna go into it again watch the beginning i want to hear it i'm just making what insensitive did you have jokes in mind? just watch it back you got fucking fingers you scroll back all right we have a couple of calls my here my fingers are for other jobs moss we have a couple yeah finger blast <laughs> we have a couple of calls no. here uh left in queue but what i'm gonna do is because i want us to take everybody so i'm gonna take these calls we're just gonna make them rapid fire okay we're gonna get to the point uh. We're, we're up, time's up, but I mean, come on, you guys are awesome. <laughs>
fucking Joshua dropped a thirty dollar donation. You guys are fucking crazy. So mm -hmm. let's let's uh well rapid fire calls. Who is ever in queue here? Let's call um let's call Seaman. We haven't spoken to Seaman in a while. Ah, uh, this guy's gonna be on for tw twenty hours. Months. Nope. Seaman, you there? Seaman. Seaman. Why do people listen to the show before they go on their calls? Well, they want to know when they're live, because they've been—he's been sitting around for a little bit. Seaman. Come on. If he doesn't answer in five seconds, you hang go, up. Going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, who else we got here? Oh, here we got the knitter. Let's see if she's knitter. Hey. <laughs> How you, how you doing, Ann? Um, not too good. Oh, not what's too wrong? good. What's wrong, Ann? Oh, cause I'm old. I hurt my shoulder again. Oh shoot. <laughs> what did, how'd you hurt it? Doing normal stuff. You know how to make it feel better. Else. You just gotta, you gotta put a little bit of exercise, a little stretching in there. You know, maybe give Mike a hand job. It'll get things loosened up in there. Just what? Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Is that how you heard it? Again. You threw it out. Yeah. Tug it on his cock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shoulder sucks, man. Did you have you ever had uh, shoulder surgery? No. Miles, not everyone has a shoulder surgery. All right. No, I'm saying yeah. sometimes everyone's shoulder inevitably goes. That's right? not true. Especially if you were active at some point in your life. No, it's, it, is, it is true. Wear and tear on your shoulder is a real thing. It is. Yeah, working and did all the stuff. He's like twenty six. He thinks everyone's had a shoulder. Twenty six year old knows everything next to me. She's I've had she's three shoulder shoulder I've surgeries. I've had three lives. Come on, you're talking to old geezers here. We know what's going on. Um, yeah. So what's going on with this show? You got where's your shoulder pain? I I could diagnose it. Three shoulder surgeries and a broken. <laughs> Look collarbone. at that man. Is it? Here it goes. Go ahead. What do you got? God, three shoulder surgeries. Three shoulder surgeries. It's a badge of honor, a broken yeah, collarbone. Shoulder, I had them all. Oh God. Moved over bicep. The whole deal. I got it all. Okay. It feels like it's grinding. Really, Ooh. like it grinding against Yikes. another. That is it, sound good. Is it between? If you put your finger, hold on. Let me Stop. put it on me. Stop. I'm Dr. Moss here. I can fix this. Okay. Don't ever talk about your shoulders. To if Moss. you take your finger right and you press it. Right smack in the middle of the front of your shoulder, there's like a, mm -hmm. it's like your labrum right over there. I don't know if you can okay. see the stream, but you're, everyone do this at home and you press in. Do you feel a pain? Mm-hmm. You do. Okay. It sounds like it's something with your labrum over here. Oh my God. Don't listen to him. He's so not it, a doctor. There could be a couple of things, you know, it could be like a, a strain, a pull, or it could be a tear. Hopefully it's not a tear or anything like that. It could be. If it was a tear, wouldn't she not be able to lift her arm? Can you lift your arm? That's the next yeah. question. I can't. I can lift it a little bit. It's not a tear, Moss. Stop it. Can't do. Yeah. I this is why you don't one. don't listen to Moss. Me mute Jesse's mic. Okay, hold on a second. Doctor Moss is in on call. I have no insurance here. No co-payment. I got you under control. So if you lift your arm up, how far can you go? Mm. Oh, about my boobs. Boobs. Oh wow. So you can go. Oh, so you can't lift it above your head. You have very big boobs. Mm -hmm. So we're talking pretty low. You can only lift yeah. it to here. <laughs> so, so yeah. So that's that's not very high up. That that definitely sounds like a labrum thing. So mm -hmm. I I urge you, Anne, whatever you do, mm -hmm. do not push it. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, if mm -hmm. it hurts, you stop doing whatever the fuck that is. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So no more hand. No, no hand. Oh, you could do a hand job. Just use your <laughs> other arm or your mouth. <laughs> but it, it's not used to doing it. How's your neck? <laughs> How's your neck feeling? Neck is fine. Okay. Hmm. That's a, yeah. what, what arm is it? Your right or left? Right. Is it when you pleasure yourself? Is it with that hand or the or your other hand? Oh, that hand. Oh shit! You're gonna have to use your feet, Ann. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, I hope you do feel better. Ice? Does ice work or heat? I've been doing that. Yeah. That sucks. I was asleep because I took someone to that Tylenol and Advil and stuff, and I missed the show. <laughs> hmm. It's not good. And is that the sound you make when you're jerking off, Mike? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Uh, that wouldn't be sexy at all. Good? Why would I make that sound? Does that, that feel good, Mike? Yeah. Ooh, I don't uh, do that. I go, ooh. Oh. Do you jerk off Mike a lot? Real question. Do you guys, like, do you, or do you just go straight to sex? Like, do you have foreplay? <laughs> We have four I want to grab your <laughs> cock, Mike. Okay. Four plays like about a minute, you know, we're old, so don't yeah. take long. Uh, don't get right to come it. too quickly, Mike. I want to play with it a little bit. <laughs> All right, I got to make this call quick because uh, we did run out of time here. Jesse Why wants to. Why so quick? Uh, uh, all this, right, so. This is such a great call. Other than the shoulder, what else we got going on? Uh, Nothing else. I'm okay. good. All righty. Yes listening guys and I'm thoroughly I enjoying you your show <laughs> yeah Jesse wants it's to show like, to go all night all right and listen I appreciate I hope night. you I hope you feel better okay and I go all night yeah I just go all night call her after the show Mons. okay and we gotta go thank you we love you I love get you. out of here all right uh, I love you who else we got here <laughs> Jesus Christ Jess do you ever want the show to end whoa why are you in such a hurry boss I gotta go jerk off all right, let's see. What do we got I've got to go jerk off. Let's go. Uh, Seaman's back on the line. Ugh. Seaman, you, you there? You said you want the show to end, then you bring Saman on. Saman. Hello. Saman, you, uh, you're from Iran, correct? Hey, wait, what is my name? Seaman. Seaman. Seaman, huh? are you from, hey. you're Seaman from Iran, right? Next time, you better call my name correctly. Okay, Mystic Mouse? Okay. Mouse? <laughs> I dare you call me a mouse. You're out of here. You're out of here, Wait, Mr. Iran. Are you kidding? That was I good. will never stand for trolling. <laughs> he called you Mystic Mouse. How dare you call me Mystic <laughs> That's Mouse? That's funny. <laughs> Two joints, you there. <laughs> Mystic Mouse. Mr. Joints, you with us. How's it go? Chris and Jesse, how are you guys doing, man? I'm What's wonderful, up, two wonderful. Joints, wonderful, eh? wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. What's going uh, on? Well, I've just been hanging hanging pretty tough. You're just hoping to get through on the lines. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the 47 messages I've sent you on the on the on the dm thing here i just i realize it's a busy night so i'm just not mad at all you don't have to apologize or anything okay so, don't apologize awesome. Moms. i won't but thank you chris, I I, chris uh, congratulations on the rangers win, winning game seven and i've always i've been on your side even when the Leafs were still in the in the playoffs i was still on your side buddy because you're my friend and i want to see you happy through something like that so thank you it's very nice. I think we should all get we should all give you a round of applause, Chris. Oh, thank you. That's what I think we should do. Can you hear my applause right now? That's right. That's right. That's right. I deserve so, a round of applause. So, yes. So uh, I don't think Tropic's not gay. I, he's smart, but he's not gay, Jesse. I mean, I'm not uh, not upset, but I just kind of thought maybe that was going on in the limb a little bit. I mean. He's, <laughs> he, he's an educated fella. And, you know, I never he said he was gay. I never said he was I, gay. If you judged him by his diet, that he he posts the odd picture of the snacks, um, cheese its and menthol cigarettes, and you know non-diet free. Is there a train behind you two joints? No, that's his. Actually, uh, you know what? Just no, it's a train. Jesse's got the ears of a wolf. That's his ringtone. I, I do have the ears. I oh, thought for sounds... a second you were letting out a nice toot, but it sounded more no, like it's, a train. It's, it's a train. There's a train about not even like ugh, about four or five blocks away. There's a train. Shit, man! You um, live by a train? That's that's. You know, Choo choo, choo choo choo. Wow, that was really good. Don't you guys have trains in, in Arizona? That was a pretty Jesus good. Christ actually, no, we don't. Here. I I can't remember the last train I ever saw in my we life. We actually, yeah, we do have trains here. We actually ride horses and 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 uh, stop the train. Oh, what was that yeah. called? What do we? Uh, what when you when you <laughs> take over a train? What's that called? Hijack a train, right? Is that what we do? Yeah, we do that here. We're in the Wild West. Yeah. Yeah, something like that, like a coach, uh, coach robbery or something like yeah. that. Yeah, we do that every like a, after every stream. We hop on horses and we we rob a train. We <laughs> we hey, shut it down. Hey, we Chris, fire. buddy, have Chris, yeah. have you seen the this uh, this gambling advertisement? It's uh, MGM Grand, and Gretzky's actually a spokesperson for it now. He's in this ad pushing gambling and stuff like that. But what I find that really kind of interesting because his what his daughter married a PGA star. I think hmm. his name's Dustin Johnson. So can you kind of see where there's a little bit of a little hmm hmm kind of thing? I know mm -hmm. you can gamble on golf, but you know how that kind of sounds kind of weird sort of thing? Chris, you know, like... I, 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 I like, never heard of any site, but mybookie.ag. Oh, no, that's what it's... Oh, what? Yeah, and, oh, God, Chris, I know. Okay, you're right. Uh, take back that last <laughs> Never even heard of that. I, I don't even know. it was kind of weird. There are other Come sites. Come on, to joints. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, did you see... um? The Rock's daughter is in the WWE now. Who? She's no. The, the Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Oh. Daughter, the Rock. How's she look? His daughter is, Isn't his daughter like eight? Beautiful, bro. 
Oh, she's beautiful. Her name's Sky or something like that. She's beautiful, bro. What? No. Holy shit. She's like eight years old. Well, I'm not making Same. it up, Jesse. Jesse, don't sass me. I'm, I'm just. I haven't got started with you yet. Just wait. Oh, oh please get started with me. I'm in the Chris, mood tonight to join. Wait, hold on, this girl. Let's get, Chris, let's get the shit out right now. Okay, when you were talking about Jesse hurt uh, people's feelings earlier. Yeah. Like I watched that cauliflower pizza stream fucking almost twice, man. <laughs> and I thought to myself, the only thing that fucking thing's good for is to patch up a raft on that video game you guys play. That's true. Uh, oh, I I got the rocks God. girlfriend. I mean girlfriend daughter up over oh. here. Are we t are we talking about the same girl? Is this? Are you are you trolling us here? Wait, is no, this I'm the girl? I'm not trolling you, bro. Okay. I seen it on the internet about a half an hour before you showed me those two fuckheads rolling around on the mat, and that's another. I got an issue with you two, Moss. Nobody's getting away scot free tonight. Mm. I had plans on a nice evening, uh, uh, an Asian movie, maybe some Ben and Jerry's ice cream before, but that's all finished, bro. I don't want any ice cream. I don't want to see no crazy-eyed women doing nasty shit like that. Just ruined my whole night, Moss. I love you, but oh my fuck, bro, that was really hard to watch. I mean, you only the first eighty-seven times you showed it. I thought, ah, oh, he's gonna give up, and then we're into the hundreds, and uh, before you know it, your your wife shows up, and of course you had to play it again. But uh, it doesn't matter, Moss. I'm what does that mean, two joints? Well, I tell you what, looking at the that... rock's daughter, I want to go gay. I want to turn gay, man. I don't know what what's going on. What does that mean, two joints? Is this the girl? Property. Fuck rock's daughter. I want to know what he meant. The hell's going on here? I seen it on the internet just before the show started. I'm not even joking around. Like she's on, she's in the WWE. Now. That's not her. Is this her? Name's the rock's Sky. daughter begins training. Oh, maybe this is her. Or begins training or something like that. Yeah, sorry. But it's oh, his daughter. Like, she's she's black. I'm not being racist, but the rock is black and that chick is black. So put two and two is together. Her? She's not black. Racist. Wait, Ripley oh my could God, move. Jesse. Is this her? Which one? They're saying Boss. this is her. Oh, fuck. So anyways, if you <laughs> yeah, want to on. talk about some really... Chris, can I, can I just mention a few other things here before you guys live your life without us without me kind of thing huh? have mm. you seen this bullshit this fucking woke shit christie's has come out with now you can get a half ritz and a half fucking oreo and they just fucking blam it together does that Ew. sound like the grossest thing ever that's I'm pretty disgusting that up, Jesse. i For think ritz you're making it up hmm. boss i'm just trying to explain to you how uh, disgusting snack this is and i mean this is you guys in the usa we don't make that shit here in canada christie's is, is probably owned by the by americans I was listening so to Bisping. We... Do you listen to him? His live stream. I was at the gym. I was listening to Bisping and his wife. They were talking about American sandwiches versus UK sandwiches, and they were saying how UK sandwiches they all they put butter on every single sandwich in the UK. It's, it's, they're called fucking moss. It, they're called chip buddies. That's what fucking BLT and those dudes have. It's two toasted pieces of fucking bread buttered on each side because you can't never get enough butter, you fat fucks. Yeah, everything's butter. Fucking, and then they put French fries in the middle. And some malt vinegar and call it a fucking chip, buddy. That sounds like a fucking heart, buddy. A chip? <laughs> fuck, bro. Mm. Oh, my God, Jesse. Why are you so hard to me tonight? Moss, what is going on with Jesse? Is I like it. Listen, I'm in the mood tonight, Two Joins. I I've been giving everyone a hard time, and you're just, you, you know, know what? you're you're in for the, the pickings, whatever that means. Oh. Well, as far as psychological abuse goes, I don't know, between this guy on the internet called Clyde, he's a bot, he keeps <laughs> telling me, Appears you've been t you've been by yourself in this chat like a loser for more than five minutes. Something about bandwidth, and it told me to fuck off. This oh! guy's been more nicer to me than anybody else. Shots really fired. Shit. All right, two joints. Listen, don't I would let love him to, go. I oh, gotta cut it off because we got a couple other calls. I do want to get in as well. Well, I just I just had one more quick thing to say yeah. about you know Jesse's not really a bad person, Chris. Oh. I mean, you would have to say you would have to say your life improved dramatically six or seven years ago when you met this tremendous person. It's true. She just doesn't seem like the kind of girl that when she grew up she wasn't, you know, that bad girl in the group that would give these special needs kids X locks at Easter and say she oh, was nine. Two joints. And then, she was nine you know six I mean? or seven years ago. I did not. I'm not Pat Barry for God's sakes. He groomed me, Two <laughs> Joints. Did you know this? I was groomed. That abs that's absolutely horrific. So anyway, so one last thing. I I'm sure you know Ron Dugay's been fisting Sarah Palin for the last little while. Like Moss, she's beautiful, man. Have you seen this chick, Sarah Palin? She used to be a, a politician or Sarah something. Palin? Yeah, I know Sarah Palin. Yeah, who's, who's banging her? Ron Dugay, bro. What? It, it, Is that a, true? An ex-ranger an ex an ex -ranger for fun. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Is that really brother. true? Well, Moss, yeah. Fuck, man. Uh, um, this is what I'm trying to tell you. You guys just hate me. That's man. weird. I'm really sorry. I ruined that's an interesting life. matchup. Yeah, I, I, I love I you two joints. And anyways, Ray Liotta, when they found him in his bed, there was a huge turd beside it. And <sighs> I don't know what else to say. Okay. All right. All right, Chris. Thank okay, you. Good talk, oh, guys. shit. All right, be good. Yeah, that's the way to end it, Moss. 
two joints coming in hot. Very nice coal right there. All right, we got two more in here. Let's try to let's try to get it through here. Uh, Carl, we got you. We see you. We're gonna oh, get you in. Carl, you're in for it, man. I'm okay, feeling think, good tonight. I think Bodie's out. Bodie. Right. Bodie, Bodie, Bodie is out. Bodie. Okay, here we go. If you're gonna call and take up an hour of our time, Bodie, you might as well stay on and wait for us the instead lone of pussying wolf. out. Lone What's wolf, up, you there? Carl? Oh, hello. How you doing? You gonna? Hello, we're Carl. ending it with you. I'm oh, sorry about that. My bad. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> What's going oh, on, man? Sorry, I'm late as can be, but um. Yeah, that's how I make money business. <laughs> um, anyways, uh see, what was I gonna talk about? Um okay, let's see. First of all, uh I don't mean to like make this kind of a downer mood, but what do you guys think about the shooting in Austin? I mean, that's pretty close from where you guys live, right? You know, I thought like, you said Austin from you guys. Yeah, I thought you said the shitting in Austin. Oh no, the shooting. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Or could be I, I think it's horrific. I, I saw, I, I read up on it like right after it happened, and uh, it makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's yeah, sick. me too. It just totally makes me sick. The but... thing that makes me even more sick is people are utilizing it to to push their political beliefs or um, you know their views on guns or whatever, and it's just like it's it's like kids died. You know, it's it's nuts. Yeah, eighteen or, or was it seventeen? Two teachers. I heard I that's like a whole class. Like that's a whole class. Yeah, I heard that the cops, like there were cops standing outside the school, and they were stopping parents they, from going in and getting their kids. And the well, cops right. were going in and getting their own kids, and they weren't allowing civilian parents to go in and get their kids. And the civilian parents' kids were dying in there, and the cops were just going to get their own kids and leaving. Like that's what I'm I'm understanding, and apparently the White House is not going to do an investigation on them because they were like, oh, we respect the police or, or some shit like that. So now the cops aren't going to get investigated for how they how they responded to that situation. It's well, really what I heard up. it it took like five to like eight minutes for them to breach the school. I'm like, why did they wait so long? They're yeah trained for this it's thing. weird yeah like the cops were outside the school doing everything they could to stop parents from getting their children who was inside stopping this fucking shooter what was wild is this kid that did the shooting was um he was actually called school shooter what like they he was called school oh, shooter. by bullies yeah yeah i'm not surprised that's yeah. like a new thing like everyone was just like because he was such a weirdo and um, yeah, the kids would kind of like he was always getting into fights Listen, and shit like that. I'm still it's like, and then he goes out and shoots the school up. It's like fucking. Could it. you imagine as a parent being stuck outside your child's school, knowing there's a shooter no. inside there, and the cops no, are I stopping you from window. rescuing your child? I I couldn't imagine. And honestly, I can't even. And meanwhile, even the cops could be in there stopping the shooter, but they're out exactly. here wasting their time stopping parents from getting their kids. The parents should have shot the cops. You know? yeah. I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> like, what's going on? It doesn't make any yeah, sense. When I heard it was that many kids, I was like, how did that, how, like, I heard the kid came in with a rifle and a pistol, right? That, so I, he had to be blown a few times, like, yeah. killed. So, yeah, why didn't they breach the school a lot sooner? Exactly. You're wasting all your time out here stopping parents from rescuing rescuing their children, but you can't go in there and stop the fucking shooter. Like, it, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And as a parent, like, I, I honestly could not imagine the situation. No, but, I don't even, yeah. Like, it's just, it makes you scared to send your child to school. You know, like, that's it's it's such a scary situation, you know? Anytime you send your kids off anywhere, there's, you know, there's, there's always that worry that, God forbid, something horrific can happen. You how, know? how could you as a fucking... Mm -hmm. As a member of law enforcement, your job is to protect and serve yeah. your community. And to risk your life for other Exactly. People. And you're out here, oh, let me tase all these parents because they're trying to rescue their child in a desperate measure. But I'm not going to go stop this fucking asshole with a gun who's shooting children? Like, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's so... Well, it's it's like, good to know that eighteen-year-olds can go out and buy that shit. You know, it's, how did yeah? How did yeah? I don't know the whole story, <laughs> but how did he get his hands on the gun? You know, it's like what's nuts, the whole man. what's the whole story? He even posted on his Instagram, the kid. That's he what, showed signs he post, that he was going to do this. He posted on Instagram. I can't remember exactly what the post was, but it, I know the gun, the, the two guns that he was going to utilize in the shooting. Feeling cute. I'm going to shoot a school. No, that's not what he said. 
But um, wait, so he was posting before this whole thing happened. Yeah. He was, and apparently he he told like his best friend that he was gonna go do something like like his. Like and his he, best friend didn't think. Oh, this is a red flag. You no, know, the kids. Well, he's eighteen. I mean, he would save so many. But like the bossing shitty. Um, I I was up one uh, night late on Discord, and someone sent it in, and I clicked on it, and uh, me drunk, a couple other people did, and they showed the the whole shooting. Like I thought it was like a video. Like I thought it was all make believe. Like I yeah. thought it was pretend. To tell you the truth, the guy jumps out of the Air Force, like shoots the windows, starts shooting all these black people goes over and makes sure puts a bullet in each one of their heads and it goes in and he sees a white boy as a cashier and he ducks down and he's laughing he's like ha ah, like you're okay don't worry what you know seriously what was this well, yeah, I could... like on the boston the boston shooting i okay. saw that live and that was insane yeah i couldn't believe that and then like i went the next day i went to see it again and they, it was because he showed it live um, on the internet, and I happened to catch it live. I mean, not I said it, was it might not been live, live, but it was pretty close to when it happened. It was the night it happened. It's crazy. Someone man. in another country sent it in, and I was able to watch it. And yeah, I know drunk thought too, and he's like, "Dude, I wish I didn't watch that." Listen, like, me too. To to wrap the whole thing up, like. I honestly just don't know how we can't get a hold of what's going on here. Like, this has happened more times than than it should have happened in multiple schools in multiple states. Like, there's just no reason for it anymore. Like, we there needs to be a plan in place. I, I'm not a fucking professional. How do you go into a like, store, though? You're an 18-year-old kid. You go into a store with a thousand rounds. And walk rounds out with a fucking and gun. And body armor. Like, you wouldn't think the person's yeah, selling, like, okay, bro, what do you, you need this for? Word. Like, what do you need body armor for? What's but going on? But then that goes into the whole fucking political thing of gun control. Like, this, like, whole thing. So, all I'm saying no, is, I, but, but without same, taking rights away from Americans, there needs to be a plan in place to help prevent these things from happening. This has happened too many times exactly. for us not to know what to do. There needs to be a fucking plan. Kids can't yes, go to school exactly. scared. Parents can't be, you know, scared to send their kids to I don't understand how you can just go to the store and buy body armor in a like, thousand rounds. What do you need that for? What are we doing? What were the, the people who sold them the gun thinking yeah. when they walked out? Like, oh, well, that's normal. Scratch it. That's you know, that's a little weird that that, that boy just bought a thousand rounds in body armor. Like, where is he going? Where yeah. is he, what is he doing with it? I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's bizarre. Deer, pheasants, or dogs, and shit with fucking M4. Yeah, what do you need body it's, armor for? Like, what do we need? Like, I don't understand. It's, it's just the whole thing is just not right. That's like, everything just. Red flag. Maybe go to the grocery store? Like, the whole world, you know, sending all these resources out there, and we can't even protect our own schools. You know? It's, not, it's, it's disgusting, like, man. It's disgusting. It, it's Listen. hard. I'm sorry to end the show with this. I had some other stuff to say about fighting, but. Uh, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Vlad is coming right. and farting on us. Vlad coming in with the farts! Oh my god! Woo! <laughs> wow! Look at that, we're farting on Jesse! I agree, Moss. He's something like, feeling cute today, might shoot up a school. <laughs> That's exactly what he said, you know, with that, that the uh, the TikTok voice, right, Jess? Yeah. All jokes aside, feeling cute today. Like, because I don't want to like keep going on it, you know, because it really yeah. disturbs me a lot, you know, especially having a child. Like, it, it is extremely disturbing. But at the end of the day, um, I am all for our rights and our amendments and things like that. I don't yeah, ever want to take too. rights away from people, but I do think. There needs to be something. This is this has happened enough times. Make them twenty one. This has happened enough times where people, where the Maybe government should at least point. know what to do to protect our children. There's no reason our children should be dying because, I mean, like, it's just yeah. There should be metal detectors at elementary schools. As sad as that is to say, there should be. I don't. Here's the thing. I don't understand. You, I you think, need to be twenty one to buy beer. But you, but you could be you could 18. Walk in and buy a gun. At, but you could be 18 yeah. and, and buy weapons yeah. and fucking body armor. Well, like what? Rifle at that. <laughs> I mean, at least yeah. bump it up to 21. Am I crazy? Listen, you can have guns. I don't give a shit. Drive a tank yeah. around. 
That's nuts. I agree with you, Moss. Yeah, 21 at least. 18? To buy that kind of shit. Fuck, man. When I was 18 years old, like, I was the dumbest motherfucker. Like, the last thing I needed is, uh, I mean, crazy weapons. Like, I wouldn't use it because I'm too much of a pussy, but. Yeah, everything is wrong about about the whole Ah, thing. I can't have that six pack. But hey, you want to fucking take out a fucking uh, group of people with, with no problems? Is that even just yeah, a, it's a, a group of, of children? Of Bizarre! Children. It's, 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 it's human beings who have never had a chance to live their life yet, who have never had a chance to experience things or have fucking, or fall in love or have these these yeah. moments yeah. in their life. You're, t- you're ripping away a child's life. You, don't have, you know how you fix this, though? You let people at 18 buy guns, no problem, but let 14 year olds drink alcohol. I think we should lower the alcohol. I think that is a problem. If you let fourteen-year-olds well, drink, Carl, you know what I'm saying? Well, we're just I go with that, right? But what do you think <laughs> makes the shooters like? Do they want to be remembered? Do they want yes. to be? It's detention. Do and yep. a lot of times, I notice yeah, like, why, the, yeah. why don't they just kill themselves? Well, no, of- because they they won't live for the attention if they could just kill themselves. They want to be alive to see. So a lot of these things I've noticed is like. These shooters usually have something going on where you know they were bullied or there there was a lack of attention or it's they attention. were abused or there's always like something that is is like an underlying reason for them to do these things and if they killed themselves then they wouldn't be alive to see what kind of attention they get. They want to do something where they're alive to see the attention they get. That's it. That's it. Any crazy person, whether they're a kid or an adult, when they do something this heinous that's all they want. They want us to talk. Like what we're doing right now, yeah, we're giving we're giving, attention. Yeah, we shouldn't even. This talk is what they about. want. I, I was at work and I came home and uh, my mom had to tell me what happened. She like, yeah, did you hear what happened at school in uh, Arizona today? And I'm like, no, what? Yeah. And then when she told me how many people, how many children died, was it 18 children and like two teachers, or it was something like that? 18 children. Yeah, or when when disgusting. um yeah, I think it was eighteen. When when we had a, fa- a cousin tell us, she was like, there was a shooting in Texas today. I was like, I told her, me, I was like, I don't even want to know because I like I I don't want to know the story. Like it's it's just too fucking disturbing, man. Like I was thinking a couple people maybe, and then when she told me how many people died, I just like oh man, I'm a sensitive person, so I cry a lot. Well, especially <laughs> when it's kids. The guy that sold the guns, eat. the guy that sold it. Yeah, like, man. what do you think he feels like? I don't even think he remembers the kid he sold it to. Like, he probably is looking at the story like, oh, man, can you believe that? He probably oh. doesn't even realize he sold it. Because this 18-year-old's coming in buying that. gun shops on every corner. And these, <laughs> buying and body armor and a states. thousand rounds. That you're not going to remember that kid? Of course in you're going to remember you don't remember anything. And, and also, what's going to happen is I'm sure they're going to investigate, you know, to see if they did the proper, went through the proper things to sell But the here's gun. the thing. So gun laws and stuff like that, there's not very many restrictions right now. Like, yeah, what you can do. So... He probably did go through all the proper, you know, restrictions and shit like that, and God. the guy passed. Even if it's if it's legal, and I was the guy that sold that kid the gun, and the all well, the it's not like it's his fault. I he would I probably throw myself off a building. It's not like he knew what think he about was going to do. Think about, but think about this though. You work in a store, right? And someone Ooh. purchases stuff uh, something from you, and then mows down a bunch of children. You're the person that sold. You wouldn't feel guilty. Of I course, would feel yes, honestly. But, I would. Probably but I'm sh- saying, like, we as other bystanders cannot blame him. It's not like he knew what he was going to do. Yeah, and he didn't know what the kid was going to use it for. All I do is so. check his Instagram. <laughs> but you would have definitely blame. But it's nuts, man. Sorry oh, to leave. I don't want to leave the no. Uh, let's see. Uh, go Rangers! Right? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Texas has an all-open carry, yeah, dumbass yeah, law, and know. cops were scared to show up. Imagine the cartels. Who's weak? Oh, my God. Yeah, right? Uh-huh. That's true. Yeah, I don't want to make it like... I mean, I understand we're probably now creeping down that rabbit hole yeah. of I don't what give we should do attention. and shouldn't do. But um, yeah. I, it could be easily avoided. Like, no yeah, doubt about it. There are certain people that should not be holding that kind of like my question kid, is, why is kid. why is the white house not investigating these cops that were restricting all this stuff from happening that's the weird thing well no that's but it, like he said like roberto said though everyone it's like here too in arizona no, the cops were every, there yeah but they everything were on is location but everything everyone's open carry no if no, no they were tasing parents who were trying to rescue their children tasing yeah, them because they probably knew that those parents are packing as well what right 
So they're what? probably. Oh, hold on. Jesus Christ. All right. I don't have this conversation anymore. But this that's is so dumb. That's probably. Listen, I'm playing devil's advocate. Yeah, I don't here. need it. I, don't I think need it's it. wrong. I think it's wrong. Yeah, don't get it's me wrong. fine. I just. But, I don't want this conversation. Okay, can I? Can I just talk have an to opinion? Carl. Don't talk to me. Carl, listen. No, no, no. Let's get together on this conversation. I mean, like, I don't know what the hell I mean, she's going. We like, can get along. That's the thing. Like, I think <laughs> if you look at the cops' perspective here, first of all, uh -huh. I was not there. I have no fucking idea what happened. We're, we're yeah. reading fucking they words. They were on location tasing parents who were trying to rescue their children instead of I going in there and there. stopping the shooter. Listen, I wasn't there. I don't fucking know. I, here's the problem. See, this is... I don't like this. I don't like all of a sudden we're going to shit on the cops. I don't they like, were tasing parents. I was trying to there. save Ellie and oh you knew God. there was a, a live shooter inside her school all and right. a cop tased you because you were trying to save your daughter. If I'm a cop... Let's put ourselves in their shoes, right? If I'm a cop, I couldn't. Hold on, I'm gonna I couldn't. paint. I'm gonna paint the picture. It's easy to cast stones and not fucking understand what's going on. If I'm a cop and there's a fucking lunatic shooting all those kids in there, now my job is to stop that fucking lunatic, right? So here we are trying so to figure out what we're gonna to do, tase you. right? What we're gonna do now? You got fucking parents going crazy on the outside. So now you're getting it from both ends. You got lunatic inside. You got parents that are open carry. You got it from both ends. The parents might have been slowing down the process. We don't know. <laughs> we weren't there. That's the thing. The it's, cops weren't even in the school stopping oh, this God. guy. I, oh, God. The cops didn't even make an attempt to stop him. See, this is the problem, man. We're all jumping to conclusions. We don't know. We were not there. We have no idea. We're casting stones. We're shitting on the cops. Now, they could be wrong. I'm not saying they're not wrong. But we got to see both sides. You can't listen. This is a heinous thing that happened. I don't want to talk gonna, about this we're gonna anymore. We're going to shit on the cops. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm good. It's crazy, man. Like it, it's I'm it's sorry, nuts. Baby. Sober I, Carl, what did you do? Let's go Rangers. <laughs> yeah, one go Rangers. <laughs> but yeah, that was messed Sober up. Sober Carl, Maybe. goat. <laughs> Sober Carl started it up. Yeah, listen. I'm not like we're canceling fucking people. We don't. You know what we we got to stop doing? We got to cut it off. The snake's head off. That's yeah, I don't want to talk start. about it anymore. Stop talking to me. I don't care. I don't want to talk Little about Joey, it. Little Joey, 18 year old, should be going Stop to the fucking store and buying it. I don't care. The game over. It's done. See, if I was president, Jesse, I would fix it all. Yeah. I would Watch fix it all. I would fix it all. You know, I would I would go in there. I would fix all the rules. I would make sure kids aren't shooting up schools, Jesse. I would, you know, Jess and Sober Carl, let me just say something here. Vote for Mystic 2024 to run after my New York Rangers win the Stanley Cup. I'm going to get people to stop arguing on the internet. I'm going to get people to stop shooting up schools. In fact, Mystic Moss will save the world. If someone goes on the internet and says, feeling cute, I'm going to shoot up a school, I would stop that as well. I would swoop in with my cape and I would terminate that child because that child needs to be off this earth. If anyone had a thought of just Mowing down a bunch of kids, Mystic Moss to the rescue, I would stop him. You know what? With my running mate, Sober Carl, we can make a difference. Sober Carl, right? We can. We can. So vote we 2024, will. Mystic and Sober Carl. We will change the United States of America. God bless. And eat oh. your vegetables. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for your time. God bless you guys. Love you. Just killed it. <laughs> really Perfect car. JBM, I love you. Cops, we're scared to go into an unpredictable situation. Like I said, who runs Texas? Yeah. From what I'm seeing, but from multiple people in chat, is a, an off duty Border Patrol agent went in and killed the guy. Not even a cop, a mm. parent went in. And killed the fucking oh, guy. Okay. Does that change yeah, your story I, a little I, bit? I, didn't even know I that. don't fucking know. I don't know the story. How We're hearing multiple hearsay. people saying the same thing. We are. We have 130 people in a live chat from all over the world, and you're just be like, okay, well, fucking. Uh, we're, uh, I bet Schmeagle, you can figure it out right now if you look it up. Schmeagle 747 says this. Okay, it's true. I we don't know. That's the thing. I I am not going to cast stones unless I know the fucking truth. I'll cast this stones. This is what I know. Nobody should be going this is into what I know. school and killing this children. This argument is fucking stupid. Your opinion's stupid, my opinion's stupid. Children fucking died. Okay? And me and Sober Carl, we're gonna run 2024, and we're gonna ban argument on the internet. Right, Sober Carl? Right. That's right. 60K strong. We got this. 61K strong. That's right, that's right. All right, thank you. 
together we're much stronger than the other ones. Love you guys. All right, Carl, be good, all right? Wonderful, wonderful. All right, you guys too. If Moss were president, this shit would all LBR fixed. Yeah. No feeling cute today, kids would serve us. That's it. First of all, the first thing I would do is ban TikTok. I would make it illegal. That's it. I would get rid of TikTok because uh, transgenders twerking has got to go, Jess. I'm sorry. I can't take it anymore. If trannies weren't twerking on the internet, we wouldn't have these school shootings. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> Mystic Moss, 2024. And you were going to be my running mate until you started arguing with me. Then I had to go to the wolf. You know what I'm saying? But you could be the Secretary of State, okay? Does that work? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you for joining in. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sober Carl, for... <laughs> I think the show's strong. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will be live again on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time for TGIW. Make sure you're there. Subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell so you know when we're live. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Headrush, Sheath Underwear, MyBookie.ag, Undisputed Belt, and UFC and ESPN Plus. Promo code MMA Holes. That's M-M-A-H-O-L-E-S for all of your discounts on all of your favorite products. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, guys... Don't be an a-hole. Be an M-M-A-hole. Oh, yeah, and uh, don't forget to uh, buy our new Carnage shirts that just dropped. New Carnage shirts right under the video. Go check it out down below, or you can go to the MMAholes.com or just down below. Just click, click the little shirt. Get yourself a Carnage shirt. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean?